evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to New Game Who Dis. I'm your host, Joe O'Brien, this evening, and around me is a cast that may make you think you're experiencing deja vu. <laughs> what? Didn't I already see this show? I thought this literally just happened. Well, you're not wrong. Uh, but we are, in fact, back for more Twilight 2000, and I couldn't be more excited. Thank you again to this wonderful cast for reassembling. It's like bringing back the Avengers. Uh, <laughs> Ross Bryant, Kate Stamus, Grant Berger, and Skid Maher. Thank you so much, guys, for coming back and playing again. Uh, yeah. Kate, how excited are you, scale from one to ten? Be honest. <laughs> ten. <laughs> that is the correct answer, Kate. Like, really? God, and I could tell how genuine the answer was, too, which is what makes it so meaningful. Uh, I am uh, m pretty far below a 10, uh, if I'm honest. I'm excited. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm so excited. Are you kidding me? This is like the greatest way to just spend a weeknight. However, uh, I'm nervous. The first time around, wasn't nervous. This time around, nervous. And it's because... I thought we had a great show. It was <laughs> so much fun and so wonderful to be a part of. And I have you guys to thank for that. And the Nash loved it, which is why we're back. We had a little production schedule hiccup and we had to remove some things around. And it was like, well, are we going to have nothing or are we going to have something? And I was like, I would love to run more Twilight 2000 if we can reassemble that cast and you guys came back and made it happen. But now I'm nervous because I'm like, how do we live up to the <laughs> former show? It's like, and now this is going to sound like we're tooting our own horn, saying like, it was a great movie. But like, oh, sorry, go ahead, Grant. I'm just hoping that this turns out to be more Gremlins 2 than Godfather 2. That's all I'm saying. I'm Ooh, hoping for Gremlins 2. I was going to say Alien. Alien? Yes. Like Alien 1. Alien 2 was the best one. But then after that, maybe we should double think. If yes. we should continue. <laughs> hey, if this became yeah. the aliens of, of, of our <laughs> network's programming, this would be that would be the greatest thing in the world. And my, yeah. my concern is like, is that what I'm shooting for here? I'm like, is this going to be the Terminator 2? I, I don't know if we can uh, outdo our first time around. But you know what? We're sure as hell going to goddamn try. Ross, what uh, sequel... Uh, have you seen that ruined the first one for you? Let's turn it the other way. <laughs> um, which uh, which series are we not going to emulate? Definitely uh, this time. What's your yes. cautionary example? Her <laughs> cautionary tale. Oh man, yeah, you banged out all the all the hot ones. I mean, uh, geez. Um, uh, yeah, is this going to be a? I realize this has its. There are redeeming qualities of this, but holiday season is fast approaching. And is this going to be the Home Alone 2? Oh, oh wow. A, a, a grim retread of the, uh, of the, of the charm of the original, um, enlivened only somewhat by the presence of Tim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that, uh, I don't remember it. It was so long ago. I think I watched it once. It was like, this is garbage. Is that in New York? It's like lost in New mm -hmm. York or something. Like, yes. He's lost in New York this time, folks. And, um, <laughs> It was earlier. It was a it was a beautiful uh, house in the north side of Chicago, somewhere mm -hmm. probably in the Wilmette or Winnetka area. This time, <laughs> it's it's the whole dang city of New York. Um, right, right. But he still has to find a house and an eccentric, uh, scary person come uh, Deus Ex Machina. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about what about you, Skid? Uh, you mentioned cautionary tales. I think that's a great way to describe it. Do you have any cautionary tales of uh, what we shouldn't try to venture into here in our sequel episodes of Twilight 2K? Uh, Ghostbusters 2. Oh. Mm. Uh, which certainly had some interesting ideas. It was, you know, the original movie was just like so much. It's like what's happening in these penthouses and like above the city. And it's like, let's let's see what's happening below the city, like in the sewers and subways. That's that's a cool idea, but not really necessarily executed very well. That's something we should avoid. I'm a fan of Grant's Gremlins 2 analogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think let's if we blow can, this apart. Yeah, it's like uh, if you can make a new movie that functions on a completely different level and in a different genre, 
<laughs> like like aliens to alien, I think that, that we can count that as success. Don't try to match the success of the previous endeavor. Try to do no. something new and different with what you've been given. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Yes, and uh, I agree. I'm excited. I think we may be. I could be wrong. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think we're we're blazing new territory here. I think we are pioneers of new game who dis because I think that any. I think there were only a couple episode fours, if not only one, maybe. Um, But they were finishing a story that hadn't yet finished, where we sort of put a little bow on a a Christmas tale, a lovely, adorable Christmas story, (laughs) uh, and and ended it. And now we're picking up and starting again. And I'm excited about it because... Uh, the thing that I'm excited about is the idea of this is what Twilight 2K should really be like for players. It should be these pockets of stories that are part of a larger narrative, that are part of a campaign about all of the different elements that that go into living in a future slash alternate history uh, like this and how the the limitless potential of of the stories that you can tell and that's what i'm excited to explore tonight is just the limitless potential of what else is out there to be explored especially when you have the the benefit of having two new characters which brings me to my other point which is i don't know maybe you're just tuning into this and you didn't catch the other twilight 2000 episodes The cool thing is, it doesn't matter. That's actually fine tonight. So if you're seeing this is Twilight 2000 part four, and you're like, what the heck? I I can't watch this tonight. I got to go back and watch the others. Actually, you don't. It's kind of like a new hope. And uh, you could just start here, and it's a whole new story we're going to tell. And if (laughs) if you want to see the prequel one day, uh, it's way better than New Hope's prequel. So (laughs) you have that to look forward to. Uh, Grant, did you have something? I saw a... uh, Oh, I, I was there. pointing up at Kate's box above me. Kate looked very disappointed at the idea that someone could just tune into this story. But I think that it's, it'll be self-contained enough. I'm excited. I'm if excited for our shot. Rules, if I were making the rules, I'd say this is not allowed. You just stop what you're doing. Go back. <laughs> But I guess I'm not making the rules here tonight. It's not my game. It's Joe's game. So do whatever no, you you're want not. or whatever he says. Thank God. Kate is the Denis rules. Villeneuve of New Game Who Dis. <laughs> <Yeah. The> what? <laughs> See this New Game Who Dis the way it was meant to be seen. Yes. <laughs> by watching the previous yes. one. There is In a order. giant theater. Be a completist. <laughs> Yes. Skin in, in IMAX. In Skin, IMAX. Skin and I IMAX. recently uh, clued into Kate's plan to watch all of the Marvel movies, which is assuredly right. going to make her hate all of the Marvel movies by the time she's done with we them. We tried. We tried to, to dissuade her from that. There's, you, I gotta watch them in order. Like I can't just watch them in, out of order and then just. I don't know what that means. I want to like. I was about to say yeah. thoroughly enjoy it because like I don't want to miss anything. But maybe it's not enjoyable to do it that way. I don't know. <laughs> I can't wait to see what happens. I'm, I'm just <laughs> excited to see what, what how that plays out. <laughs> yeah. I know, to, to see how it plays out. And I, I liked what you said, Kate, about uh, that you're not making the rules and I'm making the rules. And that's true because I'm, I'm in charge around here and I'm making the rules in more ways than one because there's you've got the rules in the book. There are those. And then I'll just be making up rules <laughs> as we go. <laughs> uh, no, that is not the spirit of these sessions. I want to dig more into the book and into these rules and get them right this time because we screwed up so many last time, including a couple really big ones, which I don't think will make that same mistake again, which is nice because, you know, you make that mistake once, you learn from it. Um, but I think that there's uh, a lot that's going to go into the, the depth of this game. That's what I'm hoping uh, to, to bring into this continuation of this story. And uh, we'll get right what we can but it might be a little uh janky we'll see we're gonna figure it out as we go uh because it is and this is the highest compliment uh, i can give it it is a wonderfully deep and complex tactical system uh when you really dig into it uh and it's done in a way that is actually extremely efficient in an only 150 page core rulebook uh compared to a lot of others that are very very highly tactical with a ton of grit to get into it has all of that and it does it and i think a very efficient amount of time uh amount of pages so uh 
uh, shout out to Free League. Uh, fantastic job on the reboot here of, mm-hmm. uh, of Twilight 2000. And a big thank you to Free League for once again supporting giveaways for uh, our listeners here and our viewers. Uh, this is a very exciting um, game to give away because I want more people to play it. If, if you look at the YouTube comments of episode three, people just loved the game and so many said that they want to go out and get it and so we want to give you that opportunity once again tonight to get you some free copies uh the entire core set including the player's manual the referee's manual maps tokens uh everything that you need to jump in and start playing uh we've got uh, we're going to give away one physical copy and we're going to give away three digital copies physical copies limited to the u.s and europe uh but if to enter everybody should enter because uh, anyone could win the the digital copy and the digital copy is still what I've been running this game off of and I think it's it's wonderful it's all I've needed to to run this show so uh, I think that uh, you should jump in there and and enter check our chat uh, Brennan is going to drop the link in chat and um Follow the instructions there to enter the giveaway uh, to win a physical copy uh, or a digital copy of the Twilight 2K core set. Thank you again to Free League. So um, with that, I want to get started. We got a long way to go. Uh, and I'm, I'm just excited to uh, also work in the LifePath system again. So uh, let's just let's just dive in. Does anyone have any questions before we uh, jump back in at all? Or is everybody good to go? I'm, I'm I'll take very excited. Silences. I'm very excited. Go. Awesome. I'm so glad it's me yeah. too, buddy. <laughs> uh, all right. Then in that case, I'm going to do what I love uh, to see in sequels. I'm not saying um, that you can't fast forward a lot of time in a sequel and uh, have it be fantastic. Uh, that uh, obviously there's a lot of precedent for that. What I'm saying is I love a sequel that picks up right where the last movie ended and where you thought it was an ending and you see there's actually more story to tell right then. Uh, And so that's where I want to start this one off. And then I'm going to let the players take it where they will. So let's just open on a uh, hazy sort of snowy landscape. Um, It is winter in Poland. Uh, We are in Western Poland, but not as far west as we want to be. The, uh, in the mist, we see two shadowy forms walking uh, along the side of a... Well, what do you guys think? You want to be on the side of a road or do you want to be just kind of in the... Uh, in grasslands? Like, are you staying off roads? Or are you going to walk probably, along roads? I think we should avoid the roads, right? Okay. So over a field, we'll say... Uh, broken and battered field maybe uh, off to the edge of frame there's like a like a defunct broken busted rotted out exploded tank or something just like gnarled and it's you know the 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 devastation and destruction of the vehicle itself uh sort of belied by the beauty of the fresh snow that just laying over it um as you guys sort of move past it. Uh, why don't you tell us who, who we're looking at, uh, Skid? Uh, you were looking at a uh, broad-shouldered, tallish, hulking um, Marseillaise Frenchman, half Algerian, named Denis Lazar, Major Denis Lazar. Broken. Oh, his spirit's dented, damaged by the recent death of his only his best friend in the world uh, Christoph and the intriguing Savannah and uh, yeah, he's just like sort of hunched over like holding his his, uh, his army jacket like close together with his, with his gloves uh, against the biting cold I can hear the crunching of his footsteps in the snow um you know there's very little uh underscore it's very low mostly we're hearing very clear the crunkling of the frozen ground uh on the boots as he sort of stumbles forward the camera moves next to him uh and who do we see grant you see a proud 
son of the Midwest walking through this wasteland <laughs> alongside <laughs> Denny Lazar. Even through the tragedy that he just lived through, seeing a true hero in Kristoff and Savannah go down as they did. You can't keep down the freedom and honor that courses through Sergeant Christopher Wozniak's veins. He's down one American flag, which he gifted a group of Polish children living in the castle we just defended. As he let them know in perfect Polish, which he was hiding the entire time, to always remember peace, love, unity, and respect. And right now, he's pulled out a disc man from his pocket, and as he's walking off the roads, he's listening to Sonique's It Feels So Good. <laughs> and you hear... And that's what takes me high. <laughs> As a s- single tear drops from his eye and he looks ahead at the distance at where they have to go. And I think his, his eyes and what he and Denis are, are thinking about now is maybe finding a vehicle or a way to move across this, this terrible landscape where at any time we might find enemies. will fade out of that and go back in time, basically, uh, <laughs> as we look into maybe the the childhood, <laughs> the the birth and early life of a new character. Uh, it's it's so exciting. We don't know who's coming in. We don't know where they're from or what their story is. Uh, I can't. I honestly, I can't wait uh, once again to build it with you guys. So I'm going to start with Kate. Uh, you're on the top of my my pile here of character creation sheets. Wait a minute. I just remembered. I want to play some. I want to play some tunes. Let's go back. We did this before. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll, we'll change this mood. Let's bring it up a little bit because now, baby, I, I don't know. It's the late 70s, early 80s, maybe. We don't know when this character is born because we don't know how old they'll be in the year 2000 yet. Those are all going to be determined by dice rolls. Uh, and so right now, we don't know exactly when it is, but it's before World War III broke out. We do know that. And uh, it was a happier time. Uh, maybe not happy, <laughs> but happier. Uh, Kate, what is your gut telling you going into this new character creation tonight? Do you have an idea in mind, or are you like, I'm rolling random the whole way? I have an idea, so I'm not going to roll completely random. There is okay. some randomness I think I want to involve, but I have a direction in which I want to go with my life, Great. as most people do, I think. Yes, I love that. I think that that that's... will soon get derailed and mm, yeah. dream shattered. <laughs> That'll probably the change. The road. Just exploded, <laughs> right? Just like just that like tank life. over there. Uh, no, I love it. I love that idea because uh, I think that's also the spirit of this. I don't think the spirit of this creation system was designed to only generate random characters. I think the spirit of the system is to show you you can start to be who who you want, but the war it just doesn't you know, uh, succumb or, or conform to your idea of what life you're going to have. So, uh, we'll see what happens to this character. Let's start with, uh, the, the, the childhood of this character. Are you rolling for this or do you know the way this child grew up? Um, I don't That's remember where in the rule book that was. Page 32 of the core rule book. Oh, I'm, are I'm your too options far ahead. For, uh, childhood. I'm already at careers. I'm like, I'm ready for the career. Nope, you have to grow up first. Just to skip the whole, whole childhood. I did too at that age. Childhood. <laughs> well, you know, if you skip right. the childhood, you could just roll for it because it's not really going to impact that later thing that much. I mean, it could. Yeah, I was thinking um, intellectual, probably. Mm. Oh. Yeah, in- in- intellectual. An intellectual upbringing. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm. Um, all right, then that gives you access to uh, a series of skills. Uh, among these skills, you get to upgrade one of them to uh, a D, from a zero to a D. Uh, we're going to skip the uh, the entire uh, rules explanation part. If you want that, Kate's right. Go back and listen to episode one. Yeah. Uh, but the way <laughs> abilities are tracked and the way skills work, that's on an A to D system. So uh, what do you want to take a D in? Tech, medical aid, or persuasion? So this is where I was torn. I was like, I either want to do like medical stuff or like super tech person. Um, so like flip a coin with that. I'm going to roll a D6. That's all I have in front of me. 
Okay. All of the odds are tech. All of the evens are medical aid. Sounds good. Here. Decide my life. <laughs> what did I say odds were? Tech. I don't know. You said odds. You said odds were tech. Cool. I'm gonna be a tech monster. A <laughs> tech monster. You know, you tech could monster. be. You could be med tech. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just for the record, Maybe. you can build toward that. But let's say in your childhood, tech is what came to you first, uh, and you'll get a specialty out of uh, this upbringing as an intellectual. Would you like to choose your specialty, or would you like to uh, roll for it? Hmm. Let's see: historian, communications, computers, linguist, scientist, musician. Hmm. Computers or scientists? Computers. 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 Ooh. Okay. Great. Um, all right, so what nationality are, are you thinking? Um, I was thinking American just because I'm not sure if I can do an accent, but like, <laughs> <laughs> but like how would it they never, be there? never stopped me before. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, I, come on, Kate. We'd love to hear you do a Swedish accent. A Swedish accent? The entire maybe, length of the show. Maybe I could do a Polish one. I don't know about <laughs> Swedish. <laughs> um, what, do you, do you want to roll for it? Or you could uh, just do American. It's up to you. Um, should I roll? Or should I just, like, do... An accent. I think you've crushed every accent you've attempted so I've far. I've only ever done one voice. And it was amazing. <laughs> and it was phenomenal. It was, it was also... A, it was a lisp I already know how to do. <laughs> <laughs> Just pick a country where that's the accent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not so it now? was a foreign. Yeah. It was it was really? Oh, no. <laughs> Are you from Andalus? <laughs> All right, Andalusia. Andalusia. I'm just going to do Poland. If I mess it up, don't worry. I'm Polish. I have the right to mess it up. Okay. Great, great. Polish. All right, so we'll go Poland. All right, now let's see what your base attribute increases are going to be. Roll 2d3. 2d3. Oh, wait. You start with your strength, agility, intelligence, and empathy, all at a C rating. Got a three. And then we'll see how many bumps. Oh. And a two. So you got five upgrades? Whoa. Hey. Hey. (laughs) Wow. That's what happened to Grant, right? Yeah. That's what happened to Waz. That's why he's such a beast. Yeah. All right. So basically, they all start at C, and then I can bump them all up. So I definitely want intelligence at an A. For sure. You should, yeah. And... (laughs) So that's two. I feel like I want them to be more empathetic than my last one, my last mm. character. That empathy was a D, your last yeah. character. Yeah. You make your character more empathetic than a contract killer, secretly. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Right? Yeah. Hey, more than funeral. the cold human weapon <laughs> you played funeral. before? Okay. I think this is a little hard to believe, Kate. <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry. Reach for the stars, though, I say. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe... Um, yeah, empathy A, <laughs> intelligence A, agility Ooh. B, strength at C. Okay, this is cool. I don't think we had anything close to an empathy A uh, no. last time, so this no. is cool. Love it. All right, so those are all your upgrades, and let's go ahead right in and do your, your term one career. You are 18 years old. Let's see. Uh, what do you want to do at 18? Do you want to go into civilian life, or do you want to go into the military? Civilian life, I'm going to school. Education. Okay, great. Going into so, the white collar path. All right. So we go into education. Would you like to go into liberal arts or sciences? Sciences. Obviously. Yeah. Okay. And that gives you another tech upgrade. So your tech Amazing. is going to be uh, upgraded. Uh, you could upgrade your tech twice or you have to upgrade it once. You could upgrade it twice, or you could take uh, stamina, mobility, or driving to a D. Hmm. How hmm. about, um, I feel like I'm, I'm going to double down on tech. This person's like a nerd. Wow. So you're awesome. already at a tech B in your first wow. year of college. Wow. Like this is, you are impressing your professors. Yeah, Very right. smart. Where are you going? 
Where you're am I going? In, you're in Pol- Oh, you're in Poland. So you. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, was, no. I thought well, you were no, American. You could, I was like, what school are you going to? You could go yeah. to school anywhere though with your with with your brains. That's you could go true. To school anywhere. Do you want to go to school in America? Do you want to go to school or in England in or France Western or Europe? Yeah. Oh. I would you know, maybe like Western Europe, somewhere else in Europe, whatever a good tech school is. I don't know what they are. So like yeah, insert either. tech school here. Insert <laughs> cool, awesome Parisian tech school or something. Mm. Like, does Oxford make sense? I don't know. Sure, but absolutely. <laughs> it's like yeah. the one school I think of. Yeah, go to yes. Oxford. Okay. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Watch okay. it like not be for that. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that's so amazing. <laughs> why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Go for it. Why not go? It's uh, our game. All right. So she goes to, or I'm saying, I'm saying she. We don't even know if this is a woman yet. All right. So, um, okay. So now we will make a promotion roll. To see how you did in school. Man, you have positioned yourself to do really well because you need to roll intelligence A plus tech B. That's a D12 and a D10, and you just need a six on one of them. Wow. Oh, wow. I'm not ready with my dice. Let's see. We've got a D10, and then we've got a D12. A D12. Yep, here we go. I've got a 10 and a 10. Yes! Oh my nice. gosh. <laughs> yeah. Four successes. Dang. Absolutely incredible. Would you like to choose a specialty or would you like to roll? Life is good. Let's see. <laughs> um, life rules. I'm, I'm going to keep going computers as my specialty. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it doesn't work that way. So here's the way it works. Uh, I, I realized this later. I didn't know it in our first time around. Uh, I forget the pages at the moment. Um, I want to say it's in the high 40s, maybe. Oh, my God. I nailed it exactly on the first try. Page 49. 49. Page 49, page 50, and page 51 are going to give you what each specialty exactly does. They are not as nebulous as I thought they were. I thought they were more narrative-based. They are actually just a bonus. So once you have computers, you've got computers. That's it. And it basically just means you're going to get a... Uh, oh, right. Plus one to any computers check uh, or any tech check involving computers, right? Um, trying to find it here. Uh, computers gives a plus one modifier to tech rolls for using or tampering with computers and ancillary devices. So you've already got it, uh, which is great. Nice. Now it's time to uh, look for another specialty. Let me see. I'm trying uh, and that's to a good find... note for you, Skid, and you, Grant, if you want to go to page 49 now and start looking at what your specialties are and how they exactly apply to skill roles that they could come in handy. Uh, for example, I remember, Grant, you have sniper <laughs> as a specialty. That gives you a plus one whenever you're using a sniper rifle to your ranged combat role. Um, all right. I'm sorry, Kate. You, your specialty for your first year uh, or whatever, first couple years in school. So my specialties I can choose from the one that in, the ones interest me outside of computers would be scientist or electrician. And I was thinking scientist in case I want to yeah. go towards a more medical route. Um, do we think that makes sense? Because I can't find like where scientist is in here um, as a specialty. There's also I'm chemist. Sure. Um, yeah. Well. Yeah, I think you go scientist or chemist if you want to go the medical route. I think you go electrician if you want to hedge toward the engineering route, you know, where you can do tech of, you know, cars and machines and that kind of stuff in addition to computers. Uh, I think that those would sort of determine your paths. You also have linguists under there, which uh, Christoph had. That would move you towards more... uh, Translation, uh, interpretation, uh, diplomacy, right? So it's interesting. Like, which path are you going to take uh, as a young student in school? Let's do chemist Ooh. because you have Ooh. to pass organic chemistry to do any of this stuff. And that's probably the hardest class I took in school. <laughs> 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 yes. Yes. All right. Awesome. So you, you you succeeded and you got a rank, or a, a uh, specialty in chemist. Um, I love it. It's awesome. Um, did you say you couldn't find what uh, wh- where uh, chemist was in terms of what yeah, it actually I did? I couldn't find where these were because they are, they're organized in a different way than they are in this like life path step through all of these uh, specialties. Yeah. It, it's going to be about identifying which skill it's associated with. Um chemist is under tech gives a plus one modifier to tech rolls for distilling grain alcohol for fuel also <laughs> lets you identify chemical substances correctly so uh in this 
you know, new world order, it's going to allow you to generate fuel, uh, which is mm-hmm. priceless. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm sure that'll be useful. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Cool, cool. All right. Great. Uh, all right. So now let's age. Let's see how long this took, this term in education. Uh, that's a D6. Do, do, do. I got a four. Solid four. Okay. So you uh, finish that term at 22 years old. Uh, your coolness under fire is a D and remains a D because you never went into any kind of military service. So you are... Uh, if the bullets start flying, as of right now, you're more likely to freak out than keep your cool. Um, all Relatively right. low low level of shooting going on at any given day at Oxford University. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, not yeah. America, it's, it's the UK. Right. It's, this is not Savannah, guys. <laughs> Rel- relatively low level of shooting, yes. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. Mostly just regattas. Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of punting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> Cucumber sandwiches. <laughs> Spirit <Amazing>. debate. <laughs> uh, Kate, do you have a um, an identity yet for this person uh, in terms of name, gender, anything like that, or are we going to keep it open until the very end? I, I have no. No, I'm going to have to do some um, name googling while you're talking to Ross, probably. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> Well, that's a great segue to my good buddy, Ross. Welcome back uh, yeah. to Twilight 2000. So excited to uh, oh, to have you back and to see you make another, yet another character. It's good to Let's be back. Let's get right into it, buddy. Do you Let's have do ideas? Are you, do you have a plan or <clears throat> do you want to roll random? What are you thinking? I'm going in kind of uh, l- l- with way less of a plan than last time. And I think that's okay. fine because much, much like... Alien to aliens, gremlin to gremlins too. Uh, we're gonna, I'm, I think my only concept is a little more chaotic and gonzo. So let's okay, let's see what so happens. You always want to do with a sequel. It's just make it weirder and bigger, and crazier. Mm-hmm. This time, four tanks. Okay, so childhood. Where? Yes. Where did? Where does the life of this person begin? Where indeed? Let's 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 go ahead and roll here. So bam. Okay. I'm rolling D6. a d6. I got a five. That's a military family. Oh, oh cool. Man, right we're off to a, we're oh, off to cool. a good start. <laughs> Amazing. It's like my traveler character. Awesome. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> all right, so a military family. This is going to give you access to stamina, mobility, and ranged combat as a nice. child. <laughs> yes. So uh, you get to upgrade one of those to a D. Which would you like to upgrade? Um, I'll do a... Uh, I'll do a stamina. Stamina. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Solid choice. Mm-hmm. Stamina to a D. You're doing a lot of working out. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Just like, um, yeah. Like see this, see this kid like, uh, um, like lifting sandbags and doing <laughs> like pull-ups at the base <laughs> while, uh, while mom and dad are at work. Is this, Skinny is little this... arms, but still shredding like a ton mm-hmm. of... Yeah. Is this stream now pro-child labor? I just want to clarify that. <laughs> We're okay yes. with that. All right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for um, sure. Uh, just have the kid bring the sandbags. All right. <laughs> Specialties. Do you want to roll for it or do you want to pick? Okay. Jeez. I've got... Um, I'm gonna, I, yeah. R re, R E more chaotic. Ooh, I'm I'm really drawn to martial artist. Oh, cool. oh <laughs> yes, my god! Do it. it. Oh. <laughs> okay, specialty is martial artist. Oh, yeah. Wow, this is already nothing that I was expecting. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so your, I guess your family sends you uh, to martial arts training at a young age uh, and you get uh, deeply into it um, and you uh, I think I think uh, I'm, I'm seeing like um, other kids at the base making fun of very skinny child and dad sitting down me like like what? you want to be a you want to be like a taking advantage of your whole life you got to stand up for yourself <laughs> like, uh, and, yeah. and sending him off and he sounds American, so I can write that down. Is American, that, uh, yeah, yeah. This this guy's American. <laughs> this person's yeah. American. Yeah. This person is American. Okay. You're now this skinny little kid uh, has now learned to defend himself, uh, has done so successfully, uh, and is now grown up, eighteen years old. 
What's he going to do? Is he going to follow in... I keep saying he. What are they going to do? Follow in dad's footsteps and go into the military? Or go into uh, civilian life to start? I mean, this sounds like uh, make... We're in we're in make dad proud territory. I think uh, I think military <laughs> sounds like a way to go. All right, so we go into military. Okay, <laughs> oh, wonderful. Yeah. And do you want to choose which military career uh, among the five options? Now, there's some that you can't be without taking a term in education, such as officer. Um, mm. But the other four, you could hop into, or you could roll for them, or you could uh, go into education. Change your mind. Want to become an officer. Oh, a lot of options. I'll I'll roll for this one. So the only one I can't be is an officer. Uh, Uh, So you have to roll a D3. You also can't be special ops because you have to already do a uh, a term in combat arms. So if you want to target special ops, you should just choose combat arms to start. I'll do combat arms then. Okay. Nice. Oh, my God. (laughs) Martial artist. Yeah, heading yeah. for special ops. Come I think on, that's, God, that's exactly going to be awesome. Right, this guy wants to. This guy. This this this. It's a it's a guy who like it's this guy wants to be uh, is driven. He has stamina. He has endurance. Um, yes, they're going uh, for it. All right. So with that path, you are going to first take a ranged combat to okay. D. All right. To start, and then you can level up ranged combat again. Recon, heavy weapons, or drum roll, close combat. Close combat, of course. (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) It's coming together. Okay. Oh, my God. (laughs) Close combat. Now, let's see how you do with your close combat training. Or ranged combat. Your choice, mechanically, it doesn't matter, but story-wise, it does. What do you test in to see if you get a promotion? Ranged combat or close combat? Uh, Close. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I skipped an entire thing. Okay. We we never did your um, uh, attribute upgrades. Oh, yeah. Uh, Those are going to be very important to which decision you make here because one's going to be based on agility. One's going to be based on strength. So let's see how this shakes out. Roll 2d3 for your upgrades. And forgive me. Like, I'm still a little sketchy. A d3, do I roll a d6 and just divide the result by three? Yeah, by two. Yeah. By two. By two. Divide the result by two. Okay. So Um, one, two means one. Three, four means two. Five, six means a three. All right, I got a one and a two. Uh, a one on a D6 and a two on a D6? I'm sorry, I got a two and a three, so a one and a two. Okay, so you got three upgrades, um, okay. which is going to, everything starts at C, and mm-hmm. it sounds like you're gonna need to upgrade strength and agility. Um, Absolutely, those are the ones. All right, so which goes to A, strength or agility? Only one um, can be an A. Um, I think as I'm as I'm going for the I'm as this wiry close fighter is coming together. I think agility is what's going to yeah. Hit. Agility well, to I think, ace. I think unless... you might want to go strength because oh, okay. just mechanically in the game, close combat is governed by strength, not agility. Understood. Um, I, I think there's a world in which I could just let you roll agility for it, but I uh, I think to stay in the spirit of the way the uh, skills are laid out, close combat comes under great strength. That's- then uh then yeah like uh, then then see this see this kid um like uh realizing that they have to put meat on their bones and like doing f- the full like just chicken breasts and and and, <laughs> and eggs and and bulking bulking yes. bulking <laughs> <laughs> all right well then let's see how you do um Go ahead and test close combat for your first term uh, in the military. That is going to be a D12 and a D6, and you need to get a six on one of them. I got a seven. Fantastic. Nice. So you, you did it, uh, which means, oh, dude, this is going to be great for you. First of all, you're going to get uh, a specialty. Would you like to choose? Um, you got Rifleman Red Leg. Tanker, machine gunner, launcher crew, or combat engineer. Whoa. Um, what is red leg? I don't know. <laughs> it was uh, briefly the name changed uh, the Cincinnati Reds, of what they call themselves, oh. uh, during the uh, during the Red Scare in the 1950s. Uh, it is it is uh, operating. Um, Howitzers and mortars is a, is a red leg. Dang, so that okay. would give you benefits for that. Okay. Uh, combat arms. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, oh, wait, I'm seeing it again. Uh, 
I might do a machine gunner. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Specialty machine gunner. Great. So that's what you learned in your time in combat arms. You also, because you su- you succeeded so well in close combat, uh, got a promotion. Uh, so, and remember our house rule, uh, my house rule is because this is sort of like one shoddy is that you get to, uh, get promoted one D three ranks, which is, which is just fun. Yeah, uh, I cool. lost the page of the ranks, the military ranks. Uh, sorry. So go ahead and give me a D three and we'll, we'll figure it out as we go. All right. I rolled a two, therefore a one, a one. Okay. <laughs> so that would make you a PFC almost certainly. I think the next rank up is a private first class. So let's just say you're a PFC for now. Great. Go back and adjust that. Okay, and roll a d6 for age. All right, here we go. Uh, oh, six. <laughs> six, okay. Oh, man. Oh, well, yeah, so, okay, so now you're it 24. It takes time to bulk up. Yeah. So, so yeah. six years you've spent in the military uh, getting really good with, with machine guns, mm-hmm. and you got promoted to private first class during that time. Uh Okay, awesome, awesome. These these uh, these characters are starting to come together. However, I think it's still way too early to tell like where they are or yeah. or uh, where they're gonna where they're gonna turn up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I want to kick it back right now to uh, to Skid and Grant. And why don't you um, Grant? Why don't you pick a location uh, and tell me somewhere where the action has stopped for a little while? Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a day later. Um, where are you guys trying to? Uh, I don't know, get shelter or something like that. I think right now, as I'm looking at the map, Skid, feel free to veto any of my dumb decisions. Um, We were originally trying to go west as far as possible to kind of get to the border with Germany eventually, which this map is not even at. The, 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 The westernmost part of this is still a ways away from any borders. I was thinking maybe we're headed towards a bit of a bigger city in Poznan. Um, but I could also see us going someplace smaller and kind of trying to have another kind of station to station. We can control the variables more easily in a situation where the places we arrive at are about the size of the castle we saw. Whereas if we get to a big city, there's a lot more things that could happen. A lot more opportunities, a lot more things that could go bad that aren't in our control. Well, why don't you talk it out for a second? Um, just kind of in character here. What, what's a conversation you're having about what to do next? Uh, well, uh, was I think that um, uh, first of all, from what I've heard, is uh, Poznan is a uh, ruin. There was nothing left. It was hit by tactical nuclear bomb. I uh, don't think that. I know that we were trying to get uh, further into the west to try to get home, but after what we have experienced, I think that uh, perhaps uh, we should uh, change our course, and I think we should make our way to Krakow. Maybe. I know it's further away from where we want to be, but I know there's nothing, we have no idea what is going on further west, but we know for sure that there is a black market in Krakow, we know that it's a free city, and uh, maybe we can find some uh, way to get home from there. Otherwise, we are just heading out into the complete unknown. Waz takes this in and smiles, and he remembers all the other times that Denis has talked about Krakow, and he actually doesn't think that it is the best way home. But he doesn't think any direction is the best way home. And he keeps any of his doubts about what could happen in Krakow to himself. And smiles. And pats Denny on the shoulder. When I hear someone suggest an about face, I always want to be marching in a direction towards more possibilities, Denny. I say that makes sense to me. And I'm with you. Hand in hand. Okay, more fair. And Denis just like hikes up his coat, closes. He's like, I don't want to lose any more friends. Oh, God. (laughs) And that chills Waz to the core. And he thinks about how the terms of victory may have changed in this war. And that maybe victory looks like 
spreading hope forward to the next generation. Like maybe the Nian Waz, they're trying to do damage control for the children ahead of them rather than anything really hopeful for them and the idea of not losing friends um, and maybe making some new ones uh, is the best way forward. Yeah, that's that's um, that's great. And I think that it's important to realize those sort of larger objectives and what is driving the character. I mean, why not just lay down and die in the snow? You right. Know? It's that kind of stuff. But now I just want to ask, and if you can tell me you don't have an answer yet and I can go back to life path, but now I just want to ask, what's the first step to get there? Are you going to turn south, uh, the road south toward Ostro Wielpowski? Uh, are there any supplies you need to get or want to get? Um, you know, what is the first sort of step on that journey uh, back? I mean, I think we need everything right now. We have a little bit of food and some water, but... Yeah, I think and bridges are closely watched and we've seen like the hazards that can come just from making a bridge crossing. Whereas we if we head south, we can get all the way to Krakow without crossing any bridges. And we don't want to retrace the way we went from Kalish earlier uh, because we understand what's on that road. We understand that there's not much else to gather there. It's like we already did the recon there. So probably doing an about face, like Waz said, and heading towards... South. So Ostrov uh, Wielkopolski. Yep. Ostrov Wielkopolski. Okay. Um, Start heading... You start heading south uh, on the road uh, by foot, um, so it's it's going to take a bit uh, of time. Um, but I how think big are these hexes? Do, what's the measurement? The hexes, on the hexes are ten kilometers. Each hex Ooh. is ten kilometers, uh, and it should work if you use the the ruler. Uh, so you could actually stretch it out and test, you know, the distance you have to go. I can tell you right now that Krakow is 240 kilometers. As the crow uh, flies. That's as, yeah, as the crow flies. <laughs> you would need to go around this river, which means 120, followed by 120, so more like 240. Um, actually, oh, yeah, pretty, pretty close. But uh, if you want to avoid the rivers and the crossing, this is one important thing to mention. It's going to take you over the mountains. Mm. So mm-hmm. that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, I'm so fucking into this game right now. <laughs> <All> right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so let's have you start heading south, and we'll actually move your pawn. Uh, just the Ooh. symbol of where you guys are on the map, and we'll say you're saying you're staying parallel to the road, but kind of avoiding the road. Right. Uh, as you head down there, and. Um, all right, I think I'll I'll just leave it there for now. I thought, oh, I know what I thought of. Uh, I'd like you guys to do a little research while we continue to do life paths here uh, because your progress on the map and your progress uh, fighting through uh, the situation in Khalid's is also going to result in experience level ups. So mm-hmm. go in and into the rule book and look at how that works. Uh, and I think you can pick one thing you can bump up or something like that. So just read oh, that sweet. for me while I continue life paths. Um, you guys are going to start to upgrade. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's kick it back to Kate uh, <laughs> as we head back to, I don't know what, uh, I guess the eighties, something like that. Um, <laughs> just came off mic there. Uh, yeah. Uh, hanging out, right. You're at Oxford hanging out with a young Rowan that's right, Atkinson. That's right. Life is great. I'm uh, just yeah. at school, immersed in my studies. Have big plans ahead of me, you know? Yeah. She's I'm in finally school. away from home for the first time ever. It's rules. <laughs> it's rules. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. And it's got a rule, too, coming from Poland to go to Oxford. I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's got to be an incredible experience. Um, okay, Kate. Let's start career term two. You have now two, four years in college. So you graduated college. Would you like to go to graduate school? Or would you like to uh, move in to start working? Or go into the I, military? I would like to do another term in education because my plan is to probably be a doctor. Um, and you need to have two terms in education, particularly science, in order to do that. 
Okay. So she's Perfect. staying in school. She loves school, man. <laughs> uh, Kate, yeah. this is so awesome. I didn't even know. I never noticed this before because we never delve too deeply into the white collar stuff. But yeah, there's a whole doctor career path, and it says you have to have two terms in education and awesome. an empathy of B or higher. So oh, cool. Wow. Cool. Uh, all right. <laughs> all right. Oh. Uh, uh, to me, this is just the best part because it's like, think of how many people you, you might have known growing up that wanted to be doctors and just never made it. You know, like yeah. it gets hard at a certain mm-hmm. point. And, you know, with war looming, let's see if we can get all the way there. Go ahead and do your next term in education, uh, which will be education sciences. And you get to uh, upgrade a skill. So once again, you can do tech uh, or you could do mobility, stamina, driving. Um, I might as well go all in with tech and then do maybe some stamina. I feel like maybe now that she's like used to school, maybe in grad school, she's maybe going out and partying a little bit. So she needs some stamina. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big party school right. Oxford. So got to keep up. <laughs> got to keep up. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Stamina goes to a D. Um... Also, let's see. Okay, and you are... Okay, so that's it. Now we just do a roll for uh, your tech to see if you got another specialty. So go ahead and give me a 2d12 roll. 2d12 now. Uh, Yeah, because you're a tech A and intelligence A now. Wow. Incredible. Give me a second. Another d12. Oh, wow. (laughs) Okay. Here we go. Here we go. (laughs) Oh, well, we got a six and a four. Oh, no. Oh, oh, just Jesse made it. Ooh, just Too much made partying. It. Oh, I did. Too mm. much partying. That was Almost close. Almost a little bit. Almost lost sight of my dreams. <laughs> but you do uh, pass, which gives you access to yet another specialty. You already have computers and chemists. All that's left is communication, electrician, scientist, and linguist. What do you go with? Scientist. Scientist. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This character is coming together. Uh, all right, great. And now let's do a uh, an your aging. Go ahead and give me an age roll. D six. Give me a one. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> this means you're like Doogie Howsering, right? I, seriously, <laughs> you really are. That Holy must have taken awesome. a lot of stamina. Let me just yeah. tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. You're just like you had your body had to keep up with all the speed you were taking to like just. Oh, yeah, you yeah. barely yeah. made it. Yeah. Oh, you wow. you made it. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I wonder if you could see like war coming, you know? Maybe. And like, yeah. And you are, I, I gotta get, I gotta finish this now because pretty soon I'm gonna be like, maybe Poland will, or maybe they'll stop allowing travel or something and you'll get yeah, be deported back. back to Poland or something, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. Interesting. I feel to think like about. maybe with my intellectual childhood too, like maybe my family was prominent and could pull some strings for me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Intelligentsia. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Brilliant. Uh, all right. And then go ahead and give me a D eight roll to see if you have any aging effects as you've D8. now hit the old age of 23. D eight. <laughs> Just pour all my dice out in front of me. Here we go. Four. Uh, okay. You're good. And then give me a war roll. This is the big one. The war roll is a D8 again, right? Okay. It's a D8. Oh, oh my God, please. Six. Okay. Oh. War does not break out. Oh, You're man. good. <laughs> could be a doctor. I mean, can you just feel your heart pounding? It's like you only yeah. just got out of school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's like the thing. It's just like world events just crushing a private dream. It's just so... <laughs> so horrible and Uh, and just like you're on your on tinder hooks like hoping it doesn't happen it is it's just it's so sad so sad uh all right let's kick it over to ross buddy you are a uh martial artist close combat trained military private first class oh what are you in the army I assume you're in the army, right? Makes sense to me, yeah. Yeah. Let's just say, yeah. Let's say you're in the army. Army or Marines, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Uh, And you are now heading into your second term. What are you thinking? Are you thinking more combat arms? Or are you thinking trying to go into special ops? I'm thinking special ops. Nice. If that's 
plus C. I'm, I'm looking at the requirements. Board. Strength and agility, B plus, check. Intelligence, check. C plus, check. You do have that C. Yes. Because uh, you started with a baseline of C. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot to tell you. If you wanted, you could have bumped empathy down to a D to make also make agility an A. Oh, uh, I forgot about that rule. So, yeah. I you saw could real fun call. doing that. You could yeah. do that. Um, I think I might do that. Yes. <laughs> a cold hearted killer. Cold hearted killer. I like how yeah. we're like switching places. Yeah. <laughs> know, yeah. Basically. Uh huh. Okay. Strength and agility are at an A. Intelligence C. Empathy D. Awesome. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, okay. I, I, we, we got I, it. I love the contrast of uh, American killer soldier coming at mm. things with like the lack of compassion that Waz has when he tends into things. Potentially. That might not be where you yeah. take it, but like it's yeah, crazy yeah. how different they come mm. at it. Mm. This is so interesting. Let's see. <laughs> cool. Okay. Okay. Term two, good buddy. What are you? Oh, you're doing special ops. Special ops. ops. Okay. So now we head into special ops. And you, uh, okay, I'm going to promote you. I don't know what the rules are, but I'm going to promote you because it says your starting rank is sergeant in special ops. So in order for you to be accepted into this, you had to have all of those stats and at least one term in combat arms. You satisfied all those prereqs. It says the starting rank is sergeant. So I'm going to say you got promoted uh, before the term. That makes sense considering the age. Right. Uh, yeah. So you did get promoted to sergeant at some point in between term one and term two. Now we head into special ops. Would you like to upgrade ranged combat? I'm sorry. Ranged combat, close combat, recon, or survival? Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go survival. So, oh, I love it. Ooh. Okay. Okay, so survival goes to a D, and now you get another upgrade. You can upgrade any of those, including Great. survival to a C if you want it. But okay, survival to C. Um, I'm gonna do. Uh, I've, I've put so much into close combat already. I might. Uh, I might go to ranged combat. Okay, ranged combat to a C. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, great. And just to be clear, uh, I just wanted you to be clear of the the process. You are. Your close combat and ranged combat are equal right now. Oh, that's right. One is... Oh, yeah. You're right. Because you They're had to deep. take ranged combat in, ter- in um, basic Actually, training. you're right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close combat C. Ranged combat remains D. There we go. That sounds more, more like it. Close combat C. Let's oh. see if you get promoted. I guess your best role is going to be close combat again as opposed to survival. So go ahead and roll close combat. A D12 and a D8 now. Right. I, I rolled a, an eight. Okay, you nice. got it. Uh, which means another promotion yes. and a specialty. Yes. Oh my gosh! And I totally forgot that your coolness under fire went up because of that. Oh, so your right. coolness under fire goes up again. Nice. So that'll go to a B after this nice. term. All right. Um, yeah, that's great. That sounds right. Great. Uh, specialty, would you like to roll or choose? It's, it's And am I looking here, do I have a right paratrooper, ranger, infiltrator, combat awareness, <laughs> sniper, S-E-R-E training? <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed. I don't know what S-E-R-E training what is. What is S-E-R-E? I, I, I read ahead. It's like, it's like, it's a little oh. bit more intelligence. It's like you get bonuses on like torture. And, <laughs> oh, oh, and, oh, wow. And stuff. Oh, and, uh, oh survival, like the, evasion, resistance, and escape. That's what that is. Wow. Sur- survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. Dope. Um, nice. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll take it. Awesome. Awesome. I'll take it. That's what we need. Yeah. Wait, you're actually taking? Oh, God, I thought you were taking Ranger. Holy shit. All right, here we go. Oh, this is, man, any hopes anyone had for having a less dark sequel that's uh, going out the window. There's a for the YouTube uh, hits is uh, uh, S E R E the most feared military training. <laughs> God. Uh, damn, I'm 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 looking ahead here, or just to clarify what the rules on it. Um, yeah, close combat specialties. Cool. Yeah, gives you plus one modifier to stamina rolls made to resist interrogation, psyops, bluffing, torture effects. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> 
God. Which, which, by the way, as someone who's a close combat specialist who has to get up in people's grill, is great training to have because you that might seems... get captured at any time. Yeah, uh, yeah. I th- I'm trying. I'm, I'm like attempting, or it's become this. This person is becoming a sort of like lone wolf. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's um, Rambo. Uh huh. Yeah, um, for real. Okay. Um. Okay. So. You got a promotion. I, I apologize. I still have not uh, pulled up the ranks. Um, I, I have them. Oh, you have them? Okay, great. Could them, you yeah. give me a D3 roll because you got promoted? Great. Um, okay, one. Okay, You're now so a staff sergeant. Staff sergeant. Okay. Great. Uh, see, now you're at a place where it's kind of like war could just break out and you'd be fine. But yeah, let's see. <laughs> That's right. First, roll a D6 for aging. Oh boy. Four. I'm oh, another four years. I'm 20, okay. I'm 28. <laughs> so you're 28 now. Um, so, uh, the aging effects. Roll a D8. Oh. I rolled a four. You're fine. Okay. And does war break out? Roll a D8. Seven. Okay, you're fine. Uh, all right, moving on. I'm going to go back and do another turn with Kate before we check back in with the guys. We'll just say that they're slowly making their way down to uh, Ostro Vil- Vilkopo- Vilkopolski. Mm-hmm. Kate, let's go term three of this doctor. Doctor. Um, okay. Doctor <laughs> so Mar- are Marcelina we there? Z- are- Zelensky. Ooh, what's her name? Marcelina Zelensky. Perfect. Marcelina. Marcelina. Marcelina Zelensky. I was like, that's a cool name. That's her name. (laughs) It's like Dr. Zelensky. It sounds amazing. That's awesome. Yeah. Dr. Zelensky. Dr. Z. Dr. Z. (laughs) Dr. Z. Okay. So now we go into doctor. We've never had a doctor before. Uh, Skills are medical aid and persuasion. Which Mm -hmm. would you like to upgrade? Medical aid. Okay, going to upgrade medical aid to a D. All right, and you get another upgrade. So you could do medical aid again. You could do stamina, driving, uh, mobility. You could do um, persuasion. I'm doing medical aid again. So that's going to go to a C. I love it. I love it. Focus. I love it. (laughs) You are very focused. You went to school, you were like, tech, 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 tech. You got out of medical school, aid, you're like, medical aid, medical aid, medical aid. Medical aid. <laughs> you have your plan and it's working out so far, but let's see if it keeps working out. You got to roll here. Intelligence plus medical aid to see if you gain a specialty under the doctor profession. All right, so I got a D12 and then medical aid would be a D8. I just had one, where is it? Here it is. All right, come on. Ooh, 11 and a 6. Oh, man. Ooh, yeah. 11 and a 6. <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> you guys are crushing it right now. Yeah. Would you like to choose your specialty? Yeah. I was looking at either field surgeon, sounds cool, or general practitioner. <laughs> what does everyone think about those? I feel like field surgeon sounds the funnest. Um, but I'm not sure with how these it's... disasters you're about to meet. Yeah. 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 So I feel like that's a little putting meta themselves in front though. of bullets. Maybe like it's just like I know the game I'm about to play versus like what I think she would do. Would it maybe be more general practitioner? I'm actually going to go to the specialties and look at them. I mean, have uh, you had any involvement with the military yet or you're totally outside of that career path, no. right? No. So field yeah. surgeon doesn't really make no. sense to me unless you were to somehow do a term in the military or, or start serving those people. And the Honestly, difference between them is field surgeon is the plus one for medical aid roles for treating critical injuries. General practitioner is for treating disease, poisons, and NBCs. Which we talked about this last time, and I. What does that mean again? Uh, Remember NBC, and we're like, yeah, peacocks. Yeah, it's yeah, it's biological. <laughs> it's like yeah. biological agents. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's 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 knowing and recognizing, uh, you know. Uh, radiation, radiation effects, uh, poison. I, I, that's what it, I remember. It stands for, it, it, for nuclear biological chemical. So yeah, right, it's anything right. in that area. And we deal with a lot of nuclear and the fallout of the war. So And right. honestly, like with you having general practitioner skills with us on this journey, wherever we end up trying to go, that can be mm-hmm. a huge help. Even if it's just 
winning people over to our side whose help we need. Like if you have a doctor with a broad base of knowledge and you come into one of these villages like that, you can help those people a lot. And you know, that, that would be huge for us too. So. Yeah. I feel like it would just make sense. So general practitioner, MZ, the MD. Uh, okay, great. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just picturing Waz. Wow. Well, gut shot just bleeding out on the ground and just being like you know what you need a general practitioner <laughs> take a look at this lump on my throat doctor i just think i might have a thyroid issue <laughs> no, I'm bleeding out. no 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 uh all right <laughs> that doesn't have to be so scary i'm dr z <laughs> uh, roll for aging kate aging that's a five so 28 Okay. Hey, we're neck and 28. Neck. Um, boom, boom, boom. We're rocking and rolling. Let's kick it back to Ross for term three. Oh Ross, you uh, now have uh, <laughs> another six years in, uh, oh in special ops or four Good years Lord. in special ops. What's next? Keep all doing right. it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, all right, so you uh, once again you, you're faced with these choices of skills: close combat, range combat, recon survival. Um, uh, I'll do uh, range combat this time. Nice. Okay, ranged combat to a C, mm-hmm. and you get one more skill upgrade as well. I'll uh, bump up my. Uh, I'll I'll take my close combat up to a B. <laughs> wow. <laughs> awesome. All right, and let's see if you get a promotion slash a specialty. So once again, now it's D12 plus D10 to get a six. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I didn't succeed. <gasps> no. no. What? I rolled a five and a three. Oh, awful. Let's yeah. see if it's because you're getting too old for this shit. Go ahead and give me a D6 stuff. roll. All right, here we go. Oh, a one. <laughs> okay. It's okay. just not enough time. Not enough, yeah, just not enough time. Yeah. Uh, and go ahead and give me a an aging roll. That's an eight, D8? Yes. All right. Oh, boy. Four. Okay, you're good there. And now on a one or a two on a D8, war breaks out. Here we go. A seven. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> All right. So we, wow. so we keep it. We keep it moving. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't roll my aging or war. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was oh, that was right. very dumb. My palms are so sweaty. I checked oh, everything off. That's so weird. I'm sorry. Uh, all right, aging. No, you did. You oh, did. yeah, you, you became 28, right? Uh, well, yeah. I didn't roll oh, we my. Didn't do war. Six, we didn't do oh, yeah, you didn't yeah. do aging and war. You're right. So you aged, roll. but you didn't do age effects. So go ahead and right. roll a d8. Sen- seniality. Senility. <laughs> seniality. Is there another seniality. In there? <laughs> it's taking effect already. Uh, it's always it's sunny in seniality. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so you pass there. Now, uh, war. Does I kind of really out? hope war starts. Two! Oh, <laughs> she's excited! It does! Yes. Oh, it does. You willed global <laughs> war to break out. <laughs> Life has a plan, and war started, and I didn't. Go senile. <laughs> Willed global war. Willed uh, war. Oh, man. Wow. Oh. Oh, man. man, um, man. Okay. I'm so happy. So, all right. So that threw me off. I, I had already <laughs> passed you. Um, oh, this is interesting. This is all right. Interesting. All right. All right. Uh, all right. So now we need to start. Okay. Do you guys want to finish Ross before you meet Kate? Or do, do you, you want to meet and I would, Kate's character? Do you think that Ross and my character would be together at all? I feel like we w- wouldn't be together. I feel like it's shaping up that way, but it yeah. seems it's that way. Me. But there, I, I, there could be scenarios where these two, in in desperate situations, I'm, I'm imagining a world in which like an extremely wounded this person oh. like just appears in front of you, needing mm-hmm. help. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Perhaps. Or, or maybe. Well. Or maybe so you, you need th- some help. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you think? Do you think Marcelina? Do you think she got called? Did she think she went back to Poland when or before war broke out? Yeah, I think war broke out, and she's going back home to be like my family's there or something. Well, okay. remember, 
we have the at war part, which could also be part of your story. Mm. So uh, let's come back to you. Uh, oh no, we're back to you already, right? Because we already finished Ross. Yeah, we finished Ross. So we're already back to you. All so right. what happens by the rules is you are either conscripted into the army or you have to volunteer to be in the army. So you do become a part of the Polish army during this, during this fight. Mm -hmm. um, you can pick any two skills and level them up once, any skills they don't have to be in your profession or anything um and in fact you may have to take ranged combat That's uh yes fine. you have yeah. to take ranged combat to d okay so okay. range and you combat. get one more skill upgrade all right her last skill upgrade is gonna be m medical aid again medical aid again love it uh all right so medical aid goes to a b and you will get one final specialty. Um, but your final specialty comes from your military service. So, um, one of the two, uh, you already have a D. You roll for, you roll for one last story or choose one from the military column. The military so column. yeah, it would just, you, you would probably be combat support. I would say I, I'm not going to have you do combat on you would be combat support um, or maybe combat service support. Yeah, that's a medical aid based one. So you are going to be a rank of a PFC a private first class and you get one more choice where you could at this point take field surgeon. It's under there. Um, you also have combat. Yep. You also have combat medic <laughs> or gunsmith. <laughs> <laughs> I just had another vision where Kate never, uh, war never broke out, and Kate's character became the Surgeon General of the United States. And somehow then <laughs> oh, yeah, she yeah, emigrated yeah. to the U.S. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, if we just kept rolling, she's on like her seventh term. She's in her late fifties. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marcelina Z. I'm combat support. I don't see any of that stuff that you're saying right I here. I said combat service support. The the next. Oh, column over. That makes a difference. That's really much more medical based, it yes. looks like, based on the skills. So, yeah, I feel like field surgeon makes sense. That's like what I had planned the whole time. So just go with the plan. Okay. <laughs> Great. Specialty field surgeon. Wow. So this is amazing. Your character worked out exactly how you wanted it to. And yeah. war I broke out my exactly goals. when you wanted it to. Yeah. Even when war breaks out, because I was like, if there's another term, I'll do field, I'll do field surgeon, and be like, she became like a surgeon or something. She did it anyway, even with war breaking out. Marcelina, <laughs> man, oh man, Getting it done. Secretly Fantastic. responsible for all of this. Gifted and talented. <laughs> yeah. Warhawk. Warhawk surgeon. <laughs> Warhawk surgeon. <laughs> uh, Beating the drumbeat of combat yeah. years at Oxford. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, and then reading just finally, um, yeah, your gear is going to be based on your military service. So uh, when you look at gear, look at combat service support, and that's what you'll be choosing from, Kate. Uh, okay. I'm going to move it on now to Ross, who is in term four of his career. War oh, did boy. not break out yet in his <clears throat> lifetime. Yeah. So let's see what you, you're going to keep pushing spec ops. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Remember, you didn't get promoted last time, but only one right. year passed. So right. let's see what happens now. Skill upgrades. What would you like? I can skill upgrade. And that's, um, uh, geez. Um, Close combat, ranged combat, recon, survival. I'm gonna bump up survival. Okay. Nice. So survival goes to a C. C. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna t I'm gonna add. Uh, I can always go with like mobility, right? You can always go with mobility. Yes. I'll or stamina that. or driving. Okay. Mobility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's now a D. Yeah. Yep. That's now right. a D. Uh, all right, but now you have to uh, do your promotion role in one of those skills, uh, and you can't do mobility. It has to be under skills that are under the um, career. So that would be survival. So it's going to be a survival role. Uh, oh shoot! I just lost my sheet. What is the uh, what is survival under? Is it intelligence? I got it here. Uh, survival is under intelligence. Yeah, so not okay. great for me. So that's not two, great for you. Two C's. So <laughs> two C's. So it's two D eight to see if you get a six. All right. I got a seven. 
Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Dude, that is huge. Oh. Oh, Story wise, that's huge. Oh. Uh, all right, Skid, keep that promotion chart up because he got one. You get okay. another specialty in special ops. What do you want? Sick. All right. Uh, another special ops specialty. You already have seer training. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go. I'll go uh, ranger this time. Nice. All right, there it is. Okay. Right. Uh, and you got promoted. So go ahead and roll a D3. Let's see what rank you carry. Okay. All right. That's more like it. A two. Okay. okay, so two jumps, kid. Where's he at? You are now Master Sergeant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, you're like, yeah, you're like Master Chief. Master yeah. <laughs> Master Sergeant. If this were the Navy. <laughs> All right, so you are now a Master Sergeant. Go ahead and roll aging. All right. That's a D8 again, is that right? Or D8. just a six? I'm sorry, it's a D6. I apologize. Six, right. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Y'all, I'm 34. <laughs> Oh, oh, another five years. Oh, wow. man. So old. Yeah, you'd be wow. the old granddad of this <laughs> uh, this party. Yeah. All right, Seen now, uh, aging effects. Is your 34-year-old age catching up with you? Now, you, if you roll a one, two, or three. On a D8, right? Yeah. Oh, thank God. I rolled a five. Okay, you're yes. good there. And then does war break out? You probably right. want war to break out. It probably yeah, won't yeah. war to break out. No. Yeah. You're ready. <laughs> and this is a D8 again? I'm sorry. D8, no, one, two, or three war breaks out. Oh, my. I rolled a five. Oh, oh right. no. <laughs> so, I, I'm sorry to keep you in this character creation holding pattern. No, but, dude, I don't but, care at all. This I'm is like, great. This is great. But I do want to pause and, and uh, I want to I want to talk to, to Skid and Grant for a moment. Skid. Grant, good buddies. Um, so, I, I, talk to me about Kate. Do you think uh, you guys want to meet Kate? Do you want to wait till Ross is done? What do you think? Well, I was thinking that maybe in this next village that we come into, maybe she's there. She found herself there, and she's treating the locals. Mm-hmm. But maybe she wants to go somewhere else like we do. So we end up hooking up that way. What do you think, Kate? Yeah, that would make sense. I'm trying to think of like which town on the way there. Or maybe she is trying to go to Krakow. Like maybe that's where she's from. Um, oh, that could be good motivation to start so when she, yeah, heading back. So when she hears people show up who are passing through and going there, maybe she sees it has her window to leave <laughs> well yeah well maybe you could be in this uh, in Ostrov Vilkopolsky maybe you could be yeah. just in this first town that we get to yeah okay cool the coolest right, thing that I learned while looking up Ostrov Vilkopolsky was that it was first mentioned in 1295 <laughs> which is amazing and then Whoa. it was formerly the autonomous republic of Ostro during the greater Poland uprising. So I just, I love Polish history too, which is a great yeah. setting for this game. And you could really dig in and do a whole session on that. You can do a flashback to the greater they Poland also, uprising. Uh, they, have a uh, they have a basketball team too. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. Fun facts. Uh, <laughs> Grant Skid, did you guys read anything about uh, leveling up? I apologize. I wasn't properly prepared. I couldn't find anything about it. Uh, okay. I found it. Okay. Uh, what the, page is it? It is on page 40. And I argue that I get five out of the five possible experience points for last session. <laughs> I will sure read them you to do, you buddy. now. Did you okay. participate oh. in the game session? You get one XP for just being there. <laughs> Inarguable. That's an XP. Thank <laughs> it. Just like the Ostro Vail Kapolsky basketball team. Swish. <laughs> <laughs> From downtown. <laughs> um, did you follow your moral code? Which I will remind you is seek justice no matter the danger. Despite significant risk to yourself or group, I will say that sniping where I did in that tower and taking fire from that tank is an instance of such a thing. Would you agree, Joe? I would agree. Did you risk or sacrifice something significant to realize your big dream? My big dream is achieve justice by killing uh, or capturing or finding my captain who was taken away. Um, I don't know. I snuck around the castle. That's kind of hard to say. Uh, I risked my life to try to realize my big dream. It, that yes, one, yes okay. of course you risked something significant. You risked your life going into uh, that castle and fighting all those guys. Yeah, for did sure. You, did you travel through at least one hex on the travel map that you had not visited before? I think so. Yes, and that's why I gave you that there, because I'm saying you guys are you're moving through. 
And then, did you risk your life for the PC who is your buddy? I don't know if we ever established buddies, but I risked my life for everyone. So I'm giving myself <laughs> five out of five stars. Thank you, Uber <laughs> Eats. Take it, take it. And Skid, you'll get it too. Um, as far as spending XP, uh, you can use your XP to improve your skills and specialties or to learn new ones. You can only spend XP during a shift when you rest or sleep. Um, so yeah, basically at, you can bank your XP right now, or you could spend it to increase any skill that's uh, currently in a zero to a D. Mm. Increasing anything to C requires 10 experience points. To B requires 15, and from B to A requires 20. So, uh, you got, uh, after each session in which you made a cuff roll, uh, let's skip that for right now. Um, yeah, you can mess with your unit morale. You could, yeah, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot you can do. But I think that the, um, the most straightforward thing is increase your skills. So do you want to think about it? I know which wanna... one I want to increase. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I think mobility was never increased for me. And I just think it makes sense, especially after like all the kind of climbing, diving, jumping and running and army things that uh, Waz has been up to. Mm -hmm. um, that he would just go from nothing in mobility to a D from kind of the things he's been through at that castle and getting there. Okay. Sounds good. Um, okay. Um, buh, 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 buh. Gr uh, Skid, do you want to do any upgrades? Yeah, there? I, I guess I'm going to boost my recon to a D. Very smart. Um, you know, Ross, mm -hmm. I don't want to tell you how to do your own shit, but I, it's, that's one thing that jumps out to me. I keep thinking as you're like, I love that you're going max in close combat. It's awesome. But, but I'm like, like you're putting is... nothing in recon, and it is yeah, rolled yeah. constantly in this game. Yeah. So just yeah, something yeah. to think about. Ross is clearly Cobra Kai, dude. Just yeah, let yeah. him yeah. sweep yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's... I'll tell you what, I don't want to go back to Ross right now. Uh, I want to I want to do the, the introduction of Kate. Um, so let's have you guys reach uh, Ostrov uh, Vilkopolsky. And so we'll move our, uh, our piece down. And taking a look, uh, the, the city itself is, uh, you know, everything is in bad shape. Everything is sort of mid-apocalyptic. Uh, but this one isn't entirely uh, destroyed or blown out. And Kate, you're working in a situation where you're you're helping helping the locals. But I will tell you, um, in the interest of uh, improving things moving forward, uh, that you have heard uh, rumors recently of uh, a hospital um, that has popped up, a field hospital that has popped up in uh, Ostrazesno. Ostrazesno, which is uh, another maybe 40 kilometers straight south uh, of where you are now, and that they're in desperate need of doctors because it's sort of a field hospital. It was thrown up uh, to deal with, um, you know, victims of the war, and uh, especially as winter has settled in, and maybe uh, a, a doctor has died or something, right? A doctor has recently passed away, and they're in desperate need uh, of help, and... Um, Maybe you want to go down there. Does that sound like something uh, you'd be willing to to do to leave your post for? And it's on the way to Krakow, so. Yeah, I feel like if she feels like, especially if this town, like the injured who once were, like aren't as injured anymore, or if they're good now, and she hears about this going south and, and the direction she ultimately wants to go, mm -hmm. and other people are going that direction too, it makes the next, to her, the next logical step to, is to go there because she can offer her services. They'll be able to go there safely. And yeah. Uh, okay, great. Um, and so you guys come into this town and now this might present an opportunity for uh, a guard, for lack of a better term, or uh, companions on the road and through dangerous territory. Uh, so why don't, you, why don't you guys just jump in and tell me like, how, how do you think this all plays out? Can someone just like do a Polish accent really quick so I can hear it? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Ross, could, Ross was doing it last night. Like, whatever I was, you think I was it is. I was trying. Uh, I was certainly trying to 
you know, it's uh, sort oh. of like uh, Eastern, Eastern, Eastern Europe. I mean, Eastern some European. Just you have yes. to talk like a W you have is to talk V. Like this is um, S is sh, you know sh. Uh, to I uh, v- Australia and uh, to Krakow, you know, and to I go to Stratoska, Western Europe. So know. it might be different. <laughs> well, and, and a British accent could make sense after being at Oxford for a while. Right. Too. Oh, a lot of people. Let's right. relax. I don't so know. So a British that. inflected <laughs> Polish accent. So, a British yeah. inflected Polish mm-hmm. accent. That's what you yeah, should. Yeah. When, when I when I lived in a predominantly Polish community in Greenpoint, the term I heard that I didn't know what it meant when I first heard it outside of my window and on the streets all the time was "tak tak tak," which just means yes. It's just like someone saying yes to their friend, but mm. that's not enough to give you a, a flavor, I'm sure. But that's what's in my head. Okay. Pierogies and stuff. Got it. All right. Let's do it. (laughs) Yeah. Kate, you are the best. I can hear it already in your voice. You're already nailing it. This is good. Pierogies, you know, applesauce. Oh, my God. Is is this a a Polish person just wander into the chat? This is incredible. (laughs) (laughs) Like Walesa? Is that you? (laughs) Uh, Okay. Um, So... Go ahead. T- t- tell me how you guys approach this. Um, maybe, maybe we could say, Kate, you approach them. Yeah, I would think I've... you guys need some shelter. You've been on the road too long outside. Maybe you take a couple days in this city to get some shelter. We might have maybe like uh, you frostbite arrive and... too. We might have frostbite yeah. still. Like maybe you arrive and you want a once over from like the people there. Like, hey, can you just take a look at me? Frostbite here. That's where you this come to me. This is great. How about each of you guys takes a point of oh. damage? And then we'll see if Kate can heal your damage uh, with medical aid uh, nice. over this, like, maybe couple days that she's working on you in the hospital. How about you take um, that damage and shove it up? I'm sorry. No, I'm, not, I'm not the referee. I don't know. I, I actually, you I, take that damage. I did take damage in the fight that still hasn't been healed, so... Yeah, okay, maybe so yeah, I'm just, like, bleeding. Like, that, I've, that. I've, like, kind of patched up, you know, first aid on a, like, bullet wound. Great. And so, so you, you don't have to take more than just yeah, yeah you have yeah. that damage, but take an because, additional point of damage. <laughs> because you haven't had good bed rest, um yeah. you haven't pr- properly healed that injury. So let's say you spend a few days here uh in yeah. Ostrov Wilkopolski. Um nice. so I that, th- do you see like a seeing like an awning of a doctor somewhere, like on a on a on a moonlit night and like stumbling in or did you see us like seeking that out right away oh, you can do whatever you want just say what it is grant then everybody's got to yeah, keep I up th- with you i think i think that that maybe we stumble in and warm our hands at a fire at a local bar and keep like a trench coats or raincoats over our uniforms and whatnot and try to conceal our weapons as best we can get in some coffee and then stumble down the street looking for the polish word for doctor on signs <laughs> and maybe we see like a general practice sign with like a stethoscope or like the, um, what is the staff of um, the, the wand of Asclepius or whatever? Yes. The Caduceus. <laughs> yeah, Caduceus. Yeah. And we walk Caduceus. straight up to the door and just knock. Hold on, hold on. Coming, coming. She gets up, comes to the door, she opens it, and you see um, a short, small framed. Uh, long, mousy brown hair, but with very blunt bangs. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how old am well, I? Twenty-eight year old Marcelina Zielinski. <laughs> she goes, yes. So this Hello. is your office? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. This doesn't make any sense because you're in the army. So did you just find a doctor's office and set up shop in it? Is that what happened? Are you asking me as Denis? No, I'm trying to figure out from a story perspective. Like, oh, did you so I just... figured, like, she's trying her make, to make her way also to Krakow, because that's where her family is, and on the way, she stopped at this place, at this village, and uh-huh. they needed, they had some injured, and they didn't have, like, enough doctors or a doctor. Right. And they were like, oh, you're a doctor, can you just stay with us for a while and, like, help us out? And set me up in here with all I have supplies on me okay so. so this was there was a town doctor who like died or is gone somehow yep and so this is all the equipment was still there so you're just like you set up shop in this other doctor's office yeah I figure this is like uh, not her name on the on the <laughs> right, it's right. A, she's not Dr. Sloan Kettering right <laughs> you know, she's, <laughs> she's at this location I just wanted and... to clarify because it wasn't making sense in my head but this is this is this is great 
Yeah, okay. it makes a lot of sense. And let's just say that, uh, Kate, you're also, because you're going to walk out of here to people that need a doctor. Let's say maybe you've trained somebody up, you know, in this time, because it's been many months since like the worst of the war and stuff. Maybe you've trained somebody up to take care of stuff here for you while you move on. Yeah, for sure. And like, because I've heard that there is another bigger field hospital set up just south, it's like set people up for success. And if they need more help, they can come down south. I'm leaving. So... Yeah, you see a different name on the door than you expect to see in front of you, perhaps. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so we see it's just like it's some man's name, and we, we expect like maybe it's like some old, some old Polish town doctor, and we open the door, and it's this Oxford-educated twenty-eight-year-old woman, <laughs> like young, hip-looking. <laughs> yeah, You're like uh, the bangs. Don't forget the bangs. Uh, pardon, uh, you are the uh, doctor. Yes. We would. And Denis is like already mistrustful, and he ha- he has like very low expectations because like your level of service that you're gonna get for anything right now has got to be you've got to expect bottom of the barrel because there's just so little infrastructure and people left. So he's just like he's just very wary. Like when he sees this person, he doesn't know what's going on, and he has he has medical training himself. So he's but this is something he can't handle. So. uh He's uh, just kind of like eyeing her, and uh, is this a you are uh, you can do uh, medical? Uh, you have medical experience. Yes, it, I, I have extensive medical experience. Extensive. <laughs> and uh, sorry, like, please, please come in. I'm sorry. I'm very, I'm very, very tired. I've been, I've been working very hard, very hard in this town, trying to do this accent. I keep. You're forgetting. doing great. <laughs> this is awesome. You're great. You're doing great. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think she sees that like you're kind of looking at her like sideways and she did kind of abruptly like, yes, hello, because she's used just people coming in and plopping themselves down being like, I need help. Yeah. And you're not doing that. So she's like, oh, OK. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, Denis is like and it's still it's so cold out. So he's just, just to get out of the cold, like he just like comes in and he's holding like you can see he's like holding his side uh, like where his wound is and he's like wincing, trying to hide it. But um, yeah, yeah, he she comes goes, oh, in. Here, here, come, lay down, lay down. And he like, says, I'm uh, all right if I just sit for now. Okay, whatever makes down. you most comfortable. What, what is the problem? What do you need? What do you want me to look at? Um, he's like, he just uh, just this scratch. <sighs> he like pulls open his <sighs> jacket, and his jacket is like sticking <sighs> to the dried blood on the wound. Like peels it. I was like. <sighs> <sighs> And oh. yeah, you can see it like soaked in through his clothes and he's like tried to patch it, but they just have so little first aid stuff left. So it's just like, it's a, it's a bad job. Yeah. She Looks goes, like it oh, might be yes. getting And I, like, I imagine like your, your hands, like as you're pulling it up, like your hands just shaking. You've been outside so long and you're, you're like, you're, you're not losing blood at such a great rate, but like you're just weakened by all of this so much. Yeah. Yeah. And probably like low grade fever, probably, you know, so mm-hmm. pretty, you know, malnutrition a little bit uh pretty bad shape yeah so you say just a scratch and she's like oh yes just a scratch but let's let's do things the right way and i will try i'll I'll have you change your clothes wash your clothes we're gonna take your temperature take all your vitals we're gonna wash out this wound so However doctors do things, she's going to do that. Okay. <laughs> so far, you're crushing it. You yeah. sound exactly like a general practitioner. We're gonna Literally, you. every time I've been shot, this is the exact procedure. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, he starts, like, kind of, like, peeling off these layers of clothes, you know, that he's been hot. They're all, you know, like, disgusting, what? blood-soaked, filthy. And he's just, like, pulling them off. Each one is, like, more painful than the one before, like, stretching out this wound. <laughs> She's like, well, we need to get these washed for you. Well, keep it away from your wound for now. And she gives you like some sort of gown. Doctor, please let me help in any way I can. I'm obviously uninjured and unaffected. I didn't take any hit point damage earlier. So uh, I'll I'll, I'll be here because I'm a beast. (laughs) Fantastic. He's actually like he needs uh, assistance for the hypothermia. But what he's really trying to say is like what Skid pointed out about having not enough materials even for skilled people to do their jobs he wants like all of the medical attention to go to the knee uh before getting to him 
Mm. She's like, oh, fantastic. And she just like hands you the clothes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can you just put like these laundry. in that pile to be washed? Thank you. <laughs> She's like uh, right, probably she assuming g- that you brought him here and don't need any attention unless you tell her. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so you uh, will go to work on Denis. Uh, and we'll have p- time pass. So uh, go ahead and do a medical aid roll. All right, so empathy is 12, medical aid is 10. Oh. So let's go. Best so doctor awesome. in Eastern Europe right now. I got mm-hmm. a nine and a two. Okay. It smells like that success is, that, to me. That is there, a success. There's also probably buffs with like my surgical instruments. I just don't have that open right now because uh, this is all brand new. And like my personal med kit too, right? Do you have gives me a plus one modifier to medical aid rolls. Oh. So, this so that should have been, been two D12s. Two D12s. So why don't you go ahead and re-roll that D10, unless it was the one that got the nine. The D10 was the nine, but <laughs> let's just, please, please worry. Oh God, it was a five. Oh, no, you're fine. Uh, Does you're your character good. also say, please, please work as administering <laughs> aid? Denise's eyes cut across the room. Uh, <laughs> please, please work. Uh, by St. Agnes self, <laughs> please yes. guide my hand. <laughs> Mon Dieu. Uh, okay, you immediately heal a number of damage points equal to the number of successes rolled. Further medical aid rolls have no effect, and you cannot try again until more advanced medical gear is applied until the next time you are incapacitated by damage. So let me um, also illustrate that the, the hit point system, even though it seems very low, I think a lot of you are sitting around four or five HP max, that's that's the max. Even though that's very low, it's it really represents... Um, bruises, exhaustion, scrapes, cuts, the shut the, the the difficulty of the body to power through, things that are tough or painful, but that you can fight through. Um, and when you're at one hit point, you can fight just uh, you know as well as you do with five hit points. It's kind of the idea. It's just when you get to that breaking point, which is zero, where you just can't, you're not dead, you're not dying necessarily, but you just can't fight anymore or walk or move on your own until you get healed. So uh, that one point is representing the fact, Denis, that this is still going to affect you for multiple days, this this injury, but you're you're better than you were. Okay. Grant, let's yeah. do a roll for you as well. Uh, I would expect that uh, Dr. Zelensky is going to notice that uh, you're suffering from some of the effects of yeah. low-grade hypothermia. See, yeah. see it on my extremities. Exactly. Ooh, and, your fingers um, are blue. <laughs> Kate, are you a doctor the- in real life? <laughs> <laughs> she knows all this stuff. Kate, what is the, pre- the exact medical <laughs> prognosis <laughs> for uh, hypothermia? What do you do? To- um, what do you do to solve it? Yeah, to solve it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. To yeah. increase it, to make it worse. So to solve hyperthermia, what you do is um, you get out of the cold, man. You know, you- <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Just, I just see it. The same rocket science. You take your fingers. <laughs> just see the bangs. Like, and then you get out of the cold, man. And then you go like this. <laughs> Stick them under your armpits because that's the warmest spot of the body is under right. your armpits. You gotta put there's your you fingers th- under your armpits. There's usually it's- someone on staff with exceptionally warm armpits that the patient can stick <laughs> their hands <laughs> into at first mm-hmm. until they yeah. get warm enough to stick them under their own armpits. At most better hospitals. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, <laughs> yeah you'll have someone with really warm armpits. Really if you have crossbite <laughs> or hypothermia on your toes, there's just nothing you can do about it. I'm sorry. Your toes have to come off. It's a, it's a medical mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nobody knows. Doctor, uh, Nobody knows. I'd like to keep my boots on uh, for the time being for no particular reason <laughs> other than to keep my toes, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do a roll for Grant. Okay. We got a four to two. Oh, God. <laughs> she Wait. wasn't expecting you guys. She's just, pretty tired. Just, hold on, hold on. First of what? all, stop. Uh, did you take that bonus? From field surgeon. Oh wait, oh no, God. it's not field surgeon. Oh, you don't get a bonus for this actually. I get um because I have a personal med kit gives you a plus one in medical aid rolls. Ah, I have okay. surgical instruments that only give me a plus one for critical injuries. Okay, um, sorry, I was looking at your specialties. Field surgeon is for critical injuries. Mm-hmm. 
and, and then general, general practi- practitioner is for disease, poison, and NBC. So that that's great. It makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. I'm like, w- w- general practitioner is that just like a flavor choice? Like, no, it's very interesting. It's mechanically for diseases, poisons, and NBC. Uh, great. Um, so you did actually fail because mm-hmm. you didn't you didn't act- get any bonuses. Would you like to push the roll for your buddy <sighs> Grant Bergadol? I don't know. I don't really know you. <laughs> Maybe we can just wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Trying to think if Waz could like he keeps it to himself, but he just begins talking to her in perfect Polish. Oh. And it's just like Did you study near here? Or did you gain your medical degree abroad? And again, oh, because I... it's perfect Polish, he I'm not accenting myself at this point. Yeah. Mm. Like, oh, wow. And she tells you how she went out west and went to Oxford. And you're playing to her empathy, her really high empathy. So maybe <laughs> she's going to try a little harder for you. Nice. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right. So I don't know my stress capacity because um, we didn't calculate yeah, that. We'll get, yeah, we, we have a couple okay. more steps in your character creation. I'm sort of just like interrupting it with story. <laughs> um, but we'll get there. Uh, go ahead and roll. If you want to push it, go ahead and roll again. Now, you're going to take stress damage if you roll a one. You'll take stress damage for each one you roll on this roll. Uh, but if you don't roll any ones, you don't take any stress damage. So I re-roll them both, and if either of them are ones or both of them, you take stress damage. For each one you roll. For each one I roll. We got 10 and a 9. Ooh, man. Dude, so you would have multiple it. hit points if you had that damage, but in this case, you uh, that's three successes. You would have cured three hit points, but for now, you just cure the one you needed, which puts you back to max. Uh, and you guys, I'm going to go away from you now, but I'm going to say this is days. I mean, especially some of the injuries you're dealing with, maybe even a week or two, mm. you spend recouping in this place, and at some point, a conversation happens where you say you're moving to Krakow, and she says, can I come with you? Yep. Uh, which is very exciting. Let's mm-hmm. let's kick it back to your boy, Ross Bryant. <laughs> Thank you for your patience, buddy. Uh, hanging in there. I don't know, I'm, I'm having fun with this. <laughs> yeah, uh, did you do like Krav Maga? <laughs> like in silhouette. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> trying to embody your character. Mm-hmm. I love it, I love it. Uh, yeah. All right, we're still it's in the 90s now. It's got to be the 90s. We got to yep. be approaching where at this point, though, the way you roll your ages, it's insane. Right. Um, let's get to. Yeah, his career term. started like 1923, it turns <laughs> out. Seriously. <laughs> let's start with <laughs> term number five. All right. Are we just. <laughs> I mean. What are, you know what's what? another option? Uh, uh, you know, another option is to leave military life and go into civilian life and then get conscripted back in. You can do that, but if you want to be a career military, then you would just stay spec ops. This 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 um, this fool staying in. Yeah, I mean, dude, you're gonna get. You could start unlocking recon and stuff like that. So it's great to stay. I think in that's the plan. Ops. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. The other thing is, buddy, that um, can you give me a sense right now? Not to extend this process anymore, but I don't mind extending it. I'm having so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he is now 34 years old, and he's been in special ops for a long time. Do you have some ideas of where he's been? Like, yeah. where is he served? Where has he done special operations? So, okay, uh, this this guy's name is uh, Jubilation D. Shackleford. Jubal Shackleford. <laughs> Jubal. <laughs> Jubal. Jubal is such a like Civil War era exactly. like soldier name. That's so awesome. I love that. It's from Shackleford? Moorhead. Yeah, that's right. Oh. It's from Moorhead City, North Carolina. Oh. oh my god. That's so that's so amazing. And um Yeah, so uh and though he wouldn't like to talk about it much, yeah, he's been deployed in various uh theaters of clandestine operations. So uh um, I think in the 90s, yeah, he's been to like, uh, um, he's been a lot of places in South America in, in mm. this, in oh, this, like, in this, like, yeah. Cold War, uh, world in which we are, like, um, yeah, so he's doing operations in, like, in a, like Nicaragua and El yeah, Salvador Nicaragua, and, Panama, and like, Colombia, Colombia, yeah. exactly. Um, so yeah, like, cut, to, cut to, uh, um, 
like uh, him, like kind of like Venezuela. I, I, I keto flipping someone onto the ground, and then like, uh, and then saying like, and then uh, turning to someone and be like, the pressure point is right, b- right below the chin, and like looking at someone who's translating it, translating it into Spanish in front of a group of. Uh, of uh, um, of uh, paramilitaries that 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 are he's being like trained. training contras. He's training yeah, contras. He's training oh my contras. God. That's exactly yeah. what he's doing. Um, <laughs> cuts. Yeah. Cut, um, like yeah. Cuts to him in in like I mean it wouldn't be out of out of bounds for him to be like somewhere in a, like Afghanistan or something like doing like security or something just like absolutely yeah like walking well, a politician dude, don't, to don't the don't airport. You, dude, you have some training in psyops, so I bet you you. My, you might have been doing military intelligence stuff, psyops, on behalf of the Afghans against the Soviets in yeah, like yeah. 1980, whatever, Absolutely. Seven, like, whatever that was. Yeah. I've never met a fighter more uh, more tenacious and uh, driven than the Mujahideen. That <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, turned out great. And uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that's where that's where Jubal Shackleford is. Um, <sighs> I love it. Ross, thank you so much. So awesome. You. Okay. Uh, we go back into special ops, and let's uh, choose some more skill upgrades. What are you taking? Great. Uh, yeah, I mean, after your uh, your gentle and wise prodding, I think I'll take some of that recon. You're welcome. Uh, okay, <laughs> recon. And, I mean, in, in, in D&D or Pathfinder parlance, it is the perception of this game you know it's just you roll it more probably than any other skill right and you get a second upgrade shoot uh i might just do it can i double up on that absolutely i'll do that i think so i'll take recon to a c nice i mean dude this is you got close combat b Range combat C, mobility D, survival C, recon C. I mean, you're very well rounded military. Remember, well, no, you took your empathy down. What's your I took intelligence? My empathy at? down. My intelligence is a C. Okay, like, so you are like helping to compensate that. Your intelligence isn't like giving you a huge not, bonus, but being skilled there is. Right. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm the not, whole other die adds a lot of percentage to your success rate, but. Mm-hmm. And I think this is, and maybe that empathy is like, I mean, it, just like I'm sure a lot of these folks were, it's like, when this guy goes back and is like, uh, all right, Shackleford, you got your two weeks leave. It's just like sitting in a room with no art on the walls, like, like watching a television and like just drinking a pint of whiskey. Like, <laughs> there's like, there's like nothing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's tough. Uh, all right, let's see if you get promoted again. Um, go ahead and give me a recon roll. All right, so that's now a D8. It's a D8 and a D8. A so it should be two D8, and you need a six. I got one six. Yes. Holy shit, dude. That is phenomenal. Ooh, baby. So you get yet another uh, right. John. Uh, I was Master Sarge. Yeah, um, okay, so go ahead and roll the promotion. That's fine. Let's do that. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, and that's one D three. Right. Uh, right, right. One. Okay. Um, so you're now first sergeant. Great. First sergeant. Okay. Uh, and specialty. Uh, you're looking at this point at paratrooper, infiltrator, combat awareness, or sniper. Um. Let's do a. Uh, Infiltrator. <laughs> I'm taking that just based on name alone. What a! I'm looking up to see what it entails. Recon I feel like specialist that goes with recon really yeah, well. It is, yeah. yeah. Oh, I get to add a plus one modifier to recon rolls when trying to remain undetected. So oh, stealthy oh, boy. So it's cool. basically a stealth boon. Oh, that's mm-hmm. amazing. That's cool. Okay, oh. phenomenal. Um, your uh, courage under fire, coolness under fire is now an A. It was mm-hmm. last term, but we didn't mention it. It's an That's, A. Right. Uh, so, I mean, just, yeah, you think about it in that room with no art and just the TV on and just a pint of whiskey. How's this guy going to get rattled by a bullet flying by? It's just yeah. sad to have <laughs> I think Give it's, yeah, it. he's like incredibly, he would never admit it, but it's like when every emotion is being filtered through like the lens of of this kind of like patriotic mission without rails 
the rails of military service to have this fellow placed on, even though like he can be put out on his own without like a, a clear like mission. It's just like, I'm a ghost. I, it's, I don't yeah. know what to, uh, yeah. Yeah. So is he a Green Beret then, do you I think? Don't, I don't know. I He's probably a could, Ranger. Yeah, U.S. Army Ranger. Ranger. Yeah. Well, okay. he's probably Ranger, and then he, I mean, if he's training Contras, that means that he has got pulled into Black Ops, which means he's probably working, you know, he's probably doing these CIA operations that are, you know, the military is sort of like lending people to. Yeah, which um, is why I would think Green Berets. I think that's yeah, kind of yeah. one of the things. Is that right more here, in so. what? Yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about. So, Makes, yeah, they could be uh, yeah, more yeah, in line with that. Great. If that doesn't break what, what we've done, then that sounds about right. So now, now it's aging time? Uh, we're calling you a Green Beret. You're a Green Beret because cool. nice. <laughs> who doesn't want a Green Beret in their game? Go ahead and give me an aging roll, a D6. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Third. Three, 37. 37. Okay. So far, the oldest character yet in Twilight 2000. Yep. yep. Uh, among PCs. And, Something uh, tells me the senility is beginning to come into play. Yeah, let's see. So a D8, four or lower now, you'll ex- experience negative. Oh, I rolled a seven, y'all. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. This guy is He's a beast. Just He's a machine. Stronger. It's because there's nothing going on behind mm-hmm. those eyes. So what's going to... What's gonna, <laughs> What's going to happen? Nothing. He is. He's a robot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the does Terminator. war break out? Okay. A result of one through four, war breaks out. On a D8 again? Yeah. All right. It is my honor to serve. Yeah! <laughs> war! War! Ah, ah, we war. did it! We did it! <laughs> <laughs> We're going to war. Shaka, gun, gun, gun. What did you roll? Four. Four. Oof. Okay, right on the edge, but that right was it. Edge. That was it. We're going. And I think, and I think, if you go back to that that artless room, it's watching watching like Tom Brokaw talk about like tensions are rising and the East is uh, talks between Poland and the Soviet bloc break down. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, amazing. Yes, that's it. That's it. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Uh, all right. Get ready for your at war term. We're going to come back to you in a second, but first we're going to finalize um, Marcelina or Dr. Zelensky, as I like to call her. Dr. Z. Dr. Z. Dr. Z. Uh, A couple final steps. It sounds like you've taken care of your gear for the most part. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, Great. Um, And we need to roll uh, for your your for your your gear the stuff that you have what you're able to leave with these guys with um so that would mean um uh sorry you get i think the only thing i roll is how many reloads i have yeah reloads but it's reloads rations water oh right uh and don't forget we have to do your starting permanent rads bro oh yeah oh yeah Uh, so that's a big one too don't forget the rads bro (laughs) (laughs) oops you blew it forgot your rads bro (laughs) sorry (laughs) check yourself bro can't be a member of this war anymore (laughs) forgot your rads bro uh Uh, yeah i'm gonna check my rads (laughs) um of course (laughs) Uh, all right, we'll get this right. We'll get this right. Uh, you. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, determine your hit and stress capacities. So uh, your hit points. Um, and um, Ross, you can start doing this too. Great. Your hit die is going to be your strength plus your agility uh, divided by two. Uh, I believe. Seems that's nine for me. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It's your... That's not right. Um, I, I lost my my page. I'm sorry, but it, it's basically like it's your it's your strength. It's the die. It's the die max <laughs> plus the next die max, and I think it's divided by four. Yeah. Oh, okay. If I'm so not mistaken. Yeah. Because strength and agility from your A, I'm taking it's like twenty four divided by four. Then? Yeah, which would mean six. I think six is like the most that it gets. Damn. All right. So 18 divided by four is 4.5. Do I get to round up? You round up. So uh, that is a five. Great. Um, 
Uh, okay. And then your stress is your intelligence and your empathy, the max uh, added together and divided by four. There we go. <laughs> it's going to be a there six. I have a 12 in both of those. That's amazing. All wow. right. So a six for the doctor. And... Uh, okay, then we uh, you determine. Now, you know what? Let's do this uh, between and apps. We'll give you a little bit of time, but we'll, we'll do that again where you do your moral code and your big dream. We'll let you sit with these characters for a minute before you reveal those, unless you just already know, which is fine. But um, mm. then you got to choose a buddy. We'll wait on that as well. Mm -hmm. And we'll, uh, I, I think I might force that next episode. It's like, you know, while we're playing right. the story, it's like, who's coming out right now as your buddy? Who's someone that you're like connecting to? And um, uh, decide your starting permanent rads. So it's just roll a d6. It's just oh, that geez. d6 is your starting permanent rads. I got a five. Oh! oh. Because you've been treating people with radiation sickness, I bet. And it's just, yeah, oh, your exposure has been high. All right, I got a two. Okay, your exposure nice. not as high just oh, yet, sorry. but the doctor. Ooh. Dang, that's like half, that's half the, of the boxes. That's half the way to death. Yeah. And um, oh. I can tell you that uh, th that having a five is, it's kind of a breaking point in which mechanically uh, you are more likely than not to uh, get radiation poisoning from exposure to radiation. Uh, so that's scary. That's a scary be number. Careful. To well, be what, a, yeah. what a hero. What a hero this doctor would be to continue exactly. to risk their lives. So it's a, a wonderful yeah. kind of thing. It's a badge of honor. Yeah. 100%. That's exactly Absolutely. what it is, Grant. Bottle cap. All right. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> burger. I love it. He's got his burger shirt on. Skid, did you, oh, uh, you did decide that you're going to spend your five XP and bump one of your skills. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Recon, yeah. Recon, great. Um, and uh, off air, we'll do your guys. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's do your rations and water uh, on air just because, um, you, you know, we, we want to determine if this is a motivating factor for your character at the moment. Um, and I'm just now, for, man, I can't find it. All right, whatever. We'll just do it later. It's fine. Um, at war term, Ross. All right. You get to, uh, you were already in the military, which means you are going to choose your gear from the special ops list, which yes. is amazing. Yes, yes. Um, and you will also uh, get two additional skills and one more specialty from special ops. All right. Um, now, how many things off that special ops list do I get to choose? Um, uh, there's a big list. Off of what? Um, how many items from the, from the special ops list do I get to select? You get all of them, except where it says this or this. Or that, then you can great. only pick one of the two. But yeah, otherwise, you get all of them. It's, it's a lot. Uh-huh. All right. Ooh, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and you, you don't have to pick it all right now. It's not going gonna, gonna to matter in tonight's uh, yeah, session. Yeah. So I've got it open it. here, ready to see. Um, yeah. Let's look into... Uh, your your last two skill upgrades. What do you want to do? And you oh, can do cool. any skill. They don't have to be special ops skills. Oh, that's great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Grant, Grant, just, Grant just messaged me. Uh, bro, <laughs> don't forget your ads. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget it's the eighties, man. Bro. You got to stay rad. Yeah, you got to stay rad. I've got only got I've only got two rads, bro. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, uh, but yeah, skill upgrade. Let's see here. Uh, man, oh man. I'm all, how am I, and I can pick kind of anything? Literally anything. Sweet. Anything on the list. Sweet. I'll, I'll go ahead and, um, and bump up, I'll bump up recon one more. Oh, nice. Taking Good. it to a B. And just because... Oh, and I'll bump up command. Okay. I like it. Command I know I, I, because to I do, Empathy's bad, but I feel like command might be the one, uh, the one aspect of the empathetic track that he could pull off to some extent. Yeah, let me give you one example of where the command skill comes into play and how it might fit your character perfectly, that you at least have a chance to roll that 
that D6 on it. Uh, you roll command if you want to get someone who has been broken by stress to get back in the fight. Mm. Yes. And so he is someone I could clearly see having the option to do that for another character. Yeah. So I, I, I like that idea. I like that. Um, all right. And then a specialty. Uh, I, 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 I believe you just choose it from the specialties on special operations. Good Lord. Again, again, again. Um, I'll do a combat awareness. Okay. Mm. Combat awareness. No, um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, this is all, I'm not doing this for any tactical reason. I already wrote reason. it down. Okay, never mind. I'm just, I'm <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> I'm not doing this for any tactical, re- tactical reason, just for like story-wise. I'm going to take Paratrooper because that's how I think this guy got here. Oh, excellent. <laughs> excellent. Oh, yeah. That is a great idea. Yeah, how else is he here? Yeah. yeah. You guys. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I I don't know if it's bad or stupid. Uh, are you guys all okay, uh, Grant? So, oh, so don't forget your rads, bro. For real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How could oh, you, you, you say that to me, bro? You already did it. You rolled two. You rolled. You rolled a two. You did it before. Um, all right, Grant, Skid, and Kate. Are you okay with me moving you along? Sure. Out of. Uh, Wiel- Wiel- Kapolsky sure. and on the road. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's let's uh, change up the vibe here a little bit. Um, and like I said, those final details, moral codes, and and uh, your uh, big dreams uh, and your buddies. We'll we'll, we'll do that um, in between uh, slash next week. Uh, all right. Just let me just. Okay. Uh, well, we need one more character. So uh, you guys are moving down the road, staying off the road mainly, um, keeping it maybe in sight uh, 100 meters or so away in the distance, but walking along it, trying to stay to the to the wilds. And again, you're seeing just the, you know, the wreckage of this war every once in a while. These, these, uh, these you know, these images pass by of the struggle that, that went on here. And uh, it ha- now you've been here for a few days and it hasn't snowed for a few days. So uh, some of the snow has melted away uh, and we're now in the new year. It's now actually 2001. Uh, we are in January uh, of 2001 and the, um, while it's bitter cold and the ground is very hard, there isn't as much, you know, fresh wet snow on the ground. And you guys are making your way through uh, some woods uh, to the western side of the road to a, a, a town where this supposedly this field hospital has been tossed up in a town called Ostra uh, Zezau. Ostra Zezau. I'm sorry, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but you guys are walking through the trees and you hear. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do it. You hear? <laughs> it's like way high overhead, a plane flies over your head. And you're just like, like you haven't seen an aircraft overhead in months. And it's just like, what is that? And then you see. <laughs> oh my God. As a guy comes falling from the sky and is designed to fall into a, a clearing uh, in these woods somewhere, I'm going to move your pa- your token and I'll show you where uh, I'm imagining this is happening mm-hmm. uh, right here. So there's there's some woodland that you guys are moving through, but there's also some clearings to the left and right, uh, and slowly coming down out of the sky <laughs> is Jubilation Shackleford. Uh, I know it's dumb, but like there is precedent in this game for aircraft still existing and being used, uh, even though fuel is very sparse. So this must be a very, very important important mission. Yes. Interested to find out uh, what what that mission is. Has Uh, he been sent to do? Yeah, I'm not going to put you on the spot just yet, but because we don't need to know. Story wise, all we see is someone falling from the sky. The three of you, what do you do? 
I think we need to triangulate and track that man down, Denis. I don't know why they'd be dropping a paratrooper in over a Strishoff like that. Yeah, I, I think I want to do... Denis would want to do some kind of check to see w- what model of aircraft that is, like which side would have sent this out here. Just do a recon roll for me, just because it was it was pretty high up there. So let's just see, you keeping your eyes peeled. Uh, did you identify? I got a seven. Okay, so you can tell that it is a U.S. model uh, of okay. airplane. You see, American aircraft, the older one. Hmm. What is it doing out here? And why would only one soldier drop out? Curious. Hmm. See this puff of a parachute across the clouds, maybe going in between like any pockets of blue. Mm-hmm. He's steering it down because he knows exactly yep. what he's doing. I mean, I can roll to see how successfully I land. <laughs> I can't Dude, wait yeah. for you to break your leg. We do have a doctor. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, all right. Well, hold on before you don't you, before you make that roll. Um, I, I'm, you know, I'm assuming you guys are going to move through the woods and approach. Uh, you know, keeping a safe distance, obviously. Yeah. But we'll say you, you three of you come up and you hunker down at the tree line and you look through. First, Ross, I want you to give me a recon roll to see if you see from the air. Because I'm sure you're looking for hostiles in this uh-huh. landing zone. So do you <clears> see <throat> them moving through the trees? So that's intelligence plus recon? It's intelligence plus recon and it's going to be opposed. So all of you guys right. roll recon too. And let's see if uh, right. if you negate uh, any successes Ross gets. Ooh, negate one. Okay, that's one success. Uh, Skid? No, no successes. Grant? A seven and a three, so one success. One success, Ross? And I got one. Okay, so that means you don't see Dr. Z and uh, uh, Waz, but you do see uh, Denis. So Denis you see Lazar. Someone. Denis Lazar. Oh, no. You see someone coming up toward the tree line. But you mm-hmm. can tell. Uh, actually, no, I'm not going to say you can tell. Go ahead. Who's that there, big man? Oh, my God. All right. And uh, down he goes. Um, should I do? I think it's it would be it's like agility plus mobility with the plus one from my yeah. paratrooper specialty. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we go. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh, I rolled a 10 and a 7. Oh, oh man. Crushed so, it. yeah. So you... <laughs> this is what I imagine. You hit the ground <clears throat> running and detached <laughs> yeah. and immediately have a weapon out. Like, <laughs> just tree. To well, tree you, tell me, like, you, you tell me what you do. Yeah. Um, great. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, and maybe just then you hear like a, um, hands up there, big man. And uh, in 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 the worst the worst accented Polish you've ever heard, you hear like, st- like stop, right? <laughs> Whatever Gorlami. it is, like, Orlami. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Gorlami. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a good way to with the uh, NATO NATO. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. How many? And uh, Denis like turns like left and right. He's looking. He says, "Is uh, only is uh, we have uh, the American soldier. We have a Polish doctor. I'm France, French. It's, uh, it's only three of us. This is not a very. This is a very unsafe uh, part of the world for you to jump into out of a perfectly good airplane. Let's see this American." And out from behind a tree steps Waz with a sniper rifle <laughs> just being brought down that was previously on him. Do you think Waz can see your rank? Is that visible on your fatigues right now? Or are you in like um, a field kind of ops infiltration? I mean, based on just the solo of it, it, yeah. it seems like rank might not be displayed. 
Um, yeah. What is your what is Waz's rank again? Below you, right? You're a sergeant major. Master first sergeant. sergeant. First sergeant. You're a first yeah. sergeant. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm just a base level sergeant, so I'm way below you okay. at this point. Uh, right, so, um, sergeant Christopher Wozniak, U.S. Army. Okay, sir. Mm-hmm. I like and see him. He just creeps forward still tree to tree we see eyes shifting from side to side and you're seeing a like the sort of body that nature made slender and work has made large <laughs> and a, oh, uh, i forgot he was a little kid oh my god you're tom he hardy any little kid you're tom hardy <sighs> in the batman movies oh my <laughs> god <laughs> and uh and like it's it's like beard um and uh like helmet uh, backpack and you see the, the jingle of equipment uh, as the fingerless gloves the fingerless yeah. gloves everything like I mean this if, if he's just coming out of the airplane is very kitted up and fresh and uh, walking up to you is like well, you're the last person I expected to see and uh, maybe now that I'm this close it's like I'll be damned uh and um uh <laughs> um I, I feel I feel like if one person is being sent in and maybe this is like an extraction I think maybe oh. someone <gasps> someone very important is off the grid oh, and it's like escape from out. New York it's escape from New York <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes yes my and my- that person is in AstraZeneca now, and you've been dropped to 20 kilometers outside of the city, mm-hmm. uh, the town, uh, so that they don't know. Oh my yeah. God. And my backstory is that I'm trying to free my lieutenant. Like he's been captured or taken POW, so they could be the same person, they might not be, but if they you- They might be together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you're okay sharing classified information about your mission in front of a NATO ally and a yet to be seen doctor. Yeah, I, I that sounds that sounds unlikely, but I'm like like I'm just like uh, okay. I heard they all I mean I heard it was pretty torn to shit out here. But he Y'all don't seem too too worse for wear. How long you been out in the field, soldier? Long enough to get torn to shit myself. Sir, long enough to see what this war has done to the good people of Poland. Long enough to make some friends and some enemies, to be honest with you. I just made a new one now, if you, uh... the interest of transparency to a superior officer, which I have a sense that you may be, I'd like to introduce you to our good doctor friend. Come on out. Marcelina is like still behind the tree. Like, did they forget about me? Can I run? Like, <laughs> <laughs> can I You're just like, sprinting through she the woods? She can't tell if like this guy's cool yet. He seems really intense. Mm-hmm. So yeah, Sheila kind of peeks out from behind the tree, comes all the way out. She has an assault rifle, but and, like she's not like pointing it at you. She just like has it in her hands. And I think Waz can sense what type of guy this guy is. He's seen them before, and he says in perfect Polish and like. Hearing how bad your Polish was earlier, mm. <laughs> he says to the doctor, he's a dangerous animal. Be careful. He might bite. Like in very fast, hard to understand Polish, like right in front of him. Mind your, you mind your manners. Oh, oh, okay. Hi, my name is Dr. C. Marcelina. Nice to meet you. Shackleford. Oh. Jacobford. Y'all going south as well, then? Yes, we heard there's a pop-up, a uh, bigger pop-up medical clinic from where we're coming from, down there. Well, maybe we can walk a ways in. But I guess I'll, that all depends on how quiet y'all can be. Y'all are the last attention I want to raise up while I'm here. Understood? Sir, yes, sir. <laughs> May we? He's uh, 
Mosra Meria. Well, all right. Well, get busy living or get busy dying, I guess. And he just kind of like peel, like turns around and and, and starts moving. <laughs> oh my god! He turns around and starts walking uh, across the open ground. Uh, what does he do with his with his parachute? Is it like uh, does he wrap it all up, put it in a backpack, carry it on his back, or does he just leave it there? I feel like it, I feel like yeah. The, I mean yeah. This is my ignorance of how an actual like a second airborne person <laughs> does this sort of thing, like. You, you just abandoned it, I would think, right? It would be such or an hide it, I guess. Hi, I think it would be like, I think you would be just like, roll, 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 like in a snow drift under a tree, like a crotch of a tree. Um, Mark the tree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and maybe turn around and just like, uh, um, I know what y'all are thinking. You're hoping that plane's gonna be coming back. And get me when I'm done with whatever I'm doing. I just gotta let you know right now. There's one. There's room for one on that flight in. There's room for two on that flight out. So I don't want y'all getting any ideas. Marcelina goes, Oh, no problem. I'm not looking to leave. You're good. She's from here. She. Hmm. Yeah. Beautiful country y'all got here. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vostrovia. And um he's like uh uh and um starts he's like, moving through. Yeah, I think like he's probably got maps and stuff and is like probably stay off the road. Um You see much activity out here? Just your plane for the last since we've left. Um, what, where is this? Ash, Ashtrov? I can't Ostrov say that. Ostrov Vilkopolsky. Yes. Last hostile. So yeah, for the last. Uh, sorry. Last hostiles we saw, sir, were uh, a couple clicks north and east of here. Um, we lost a few good soldiers in the battle, but we were able to stop the Soviet advance on a small castle up there. Uh, now that the children are safe and uh, order is restored at the town. The idea was to move in a southeasterly direction towards Krakow. Um, we have plenty of intel that there might be more opportunities in the free cities than there are currently where we are. A way out, sir, for lack of a better term, or any type of uh, communication with command. You're the first U.S. soldier I've seen in months. All right, I'm Will. Hopefully not the last. We're taking this ground back, y'all. <laughs> Same. I don't worry. Them. The red sun ain't gonna rise over here much longer. <laughs> um, and um, and uh, I think it's like it's like well, right then, if y'all hardy enough to go on, let's go on. All right. She, she, yeah. Marcelina will just follow. She's not like thrilled that you're part of her group now, but I don't think she has a choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, don't Denis think is they're like, going to be buddies. What? <laughs> yeah, Denis is, I mean, Denis, I think we've all, B and, and Waz, have seen guys like this. And we know that, like, we better just do what he says. <laughs> because, like, there's, we, we're. You know, the, the chances that we could even get the jump on him, even two on one, are basically nil. So it's like, as long as he's friendly, like we'll just we'll just go along with him. Yeah, and Waz, there's something comforting about a chain of command returning and another American soldier that he's interested in pursuing for a time at the beginning. But Waz's ulterior motives are, are different from what might actually be driving him because now that everything's gone foobar and the shit has hit the fan in the war... Chain of command doesn't mean what it used to, but yeah, yeah. If, it, if it's about uh, seeing it, it, something is important, if a U.S. Uh, paratrooper plane dropped this guy in the middle of this area, so he wants to follow him just to see what could happen, and he's like, 
making eyes of apology at Denis for like how like um, gruff our new American like uh, ally is in this. He was hoping he'd be a bit smoother. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, I. I think I mean yeah. I, this this guy doesn't want to. This guy doesn't want to be encumbered with a group. Yeah. But uh, I think there's a. Here, um, here's one yeah. thing. Here's one thing that I've been thinking about. This is something that Denis and I'm sure what it occurred to was too. Uh, Marceline, Marcelina, is worth her weight in gold. Yeah. She is one of the most valuable people, items, things in in this country right now. An actual doctor. So, like, this is precious cargo. So, just that alone might be incentive enough to hook up with us. Mm-hmm. You know, that, I mean, that, like, we can figure out, like, what that actually means to us right. and what we're trying to do, but this is, this is the Ark of the Covenant right here. Uh-huh. You know? So you're saying if we were able to bring uh, bring a highly skilled medical professional into an area that does not currently possess one, that would reflect pretty well on the United States military and her NATO allies. Hearts and minds. Hearts and minds. And this may not even be like an out loud discussion. This mm-hmm. could be something that we're just, just all thinking. The wheels spinning, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I think for uh, for, uh, for for Shackleford, this is a marriage of convenience, and he's at the moment ready to bounce yeah. on y'all. The second things pivot, but for now, it's like this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. All right, uh, an, if, an unexpected windfall mm-hmm. that you weren't, mm-hmm. yeah, you weren't. Yeah, if we can attach if, yourself to our group to get into where you want to get into. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And so, like, all right then. So I said, it's uh, 20 miles to, um, or 20, yeah, 20, 20 clicks, I guess, to, there, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> 20 European miles. 20 European miles. European miles. European miles. <laughs> Y'all, it's 20 English leagues to Austria. <laughs> so, How right. many English channels is that? <laughs> hmm. See if I... Now, how many fathoms are we... <laughs> how, many, yeah. how many cubits does that represent? So we better get moving. You guys... The group forms and moves away through the woods uh, down uh, south towards Ostrazezo um, to the west of the road as they head south. And just uh, as the sun is beginning to really set uh, in the distance, you arrive and see the long shadows cast by a town that is largely blown out and destroyed uh, though some buildings still stand what is contained in those buildings who uh, jubilation is here to find where perhaps this rumored field hospital is you have yet to find out uh, but you you know that all of it is on the way to crack of and if you're going to get there, you got to go through here first. There's no telling what's on the other side of these buildings. And we'll pick it up there next week, guys. Oh, come on. I don't want to stop. But, but I have to. I have to. I signed a contract that said this would be a two hour show. Uh, so sorry, guys. Hate to end it there, but you guys were fantastic. You were fantastic, all of you tonight. Thank oh you God. so much for making my job so easy. Uh, this is great, and I can't wait to get to work on next week's episode uh i think that's it we'll see you guys next time take it easy everybody good night Bye.